Hey, hey, everybody, and welcome back to Westeros. We are coming at you live with episode 10 of A Sea of Spears, a milestone episode right between 11 and 9 that we have arbitrarily decided is a big deal in Western culture. But it is going to be a big deal uh, because we are down to the top eight in the joust for Princess Marcella's name day tourney uh, tomorrow uh, and the next day in game. Uh, all sorts of tourney stuff is going to draw to a close. We got the melee coming up. Going to be a big old brawl with 49 warriors duking it out for glory and coin. Uh, we've got a feast coming up at the Red Keep where House Nymerian will learn what's really dangerous about King's Landing as they once again break bread with the usurper king, Robert Baratheon. We got heartbreak. We got romance. We got all sorts of stuff coming your way uh, here from the tourney ground and streets of King's Landing. And serving it up to you on a silver platter, we've got a crack team of ace actors and voice actors and geeks and industry professionals and totally put together people who would never break their glasses a minute and a half before we go live. <laughs> so let's start with Erica, who's almost always the most put together of us. Who's your character? What's your character up to? And you decide who we're going to introduce next. All right. I'm Erica, and I'm playing Bela Nymerian. I am second uh, to the heir, which is my sister, and I'm her twin by just a few moments. And despite that, I'm still pretty accomplished. In fact, I'm a heckin' good fighter, and I am currently still in the tournament. I'm in the top eight and looking to break into the top four in just a little bit today. So that's what I'm up to. Um, it's going to be a, a big, challenging joust. So um, with that, I'll pass it to my big sister. Hi, I'm Felicia, and I play Raina. Uh, I am the heir to House Nymerian. And uh, the flip side of the same coin <laughs> with Bela, where she is uh, dark and swift and deadly, I am light and not so swift, but more deadly, maybe, <laughs> in a different way. <laughs> she is much better with a sword and a spear than I am, uh, but we work very well together. And uh, the only thing I've accomplished this week is I won a duel of honor uh, versus a gentleman by the name of Adam Dannett. Lord Adam Dennett, who had accused our house of murder of small folk. Uh, and so the king, being Robert, uh, decided that the gods would decide uh, and, and initiated a combat, a challenge by combat. <clears throat> and I did win. And, and then shortly after, Adam did die. <laughs> but... Oops. He wasn't dead at the end of our fight. He was walking. <laughs> no, but you did kind of fulfill the prophecy. Uh, we'll see how it works out. <laughs> I don't know if that was the only thing that you've accomplished this week, because you've also been riding herd onto the young scions of House Nymerian, uh, which is no, uh, no mean feat. So there's been some social stuff going on. Uh, yes. But yeah, that was the biggest, the biggest piles of dice that you rolled. Yeah. Uh, that was where, my big get. Yeah, that was your, your big uh, kind of spotlight moment. Uh, who's up next? Um, I'm going to go to my brother, Luke. Well, hello. Uh, my name is Robert. I'm playing Luke, the oldest son and third oldest child of the house. Um, he is a city boy, having lived in King's Landing for quite some time, and uh, has been somewhat more free than the rest of his siblings, what with not being burdened with expectations. Uh, recently lost in the third round of the tournament and is looking forward to the melee, although rather bruised at the moment. All right, who's up next, Robert? Ah, uh, let's go to the younger brother. Uh, hi, I'm Ash. I play Adam Nymerian, the youngest sibling of the house. I recently won the archery contest 
And apart from that, I've been mostly betting on my siblings and the friends of our house to try and um, amass us more wealth. And totally not getting into any trouble of my own. <laughs> Ash says with a diabolical chuckle. Uh, and well, who does yeah. that leave? Kevin. It does, yes. So, Hi. Kevin, Hi. how's it going? What's up? Who's your character? What you up to? Hi, I'm Kevin Zarniker. Kevin Zarniki, whose brain is currently filled with poisonous blood. I'm a game designer and voice actor and about a half a dozen other things, but today I'll be playing Vannon Rivers, Bastard of the Riverlands, and the Blackwood family, who's been raised by House Nymerian ever so kindly, even while he has nursed a childhood crush on Bela, which he has only just developed the courage to reveal to her so awkwardly while under the effect of the milk of the poppy. He did win a horse race, and he did get pretty far in the tourneys, but he got his handed to him. So, uh, yeah, now, uh, now he's just making a preposterous amount of money on betting. That brings us to the bevy of NPCs swirling around the house uh, that you guys will be running into all stinking episode and, spoiler it, all stinking campaign, because it's the NPCs that make the setting by giving all these players folks to bounce off of, sometimes literally, sometimes figuratively, uh, and all kinds of stuff going on on that front. But we have one more character to introduce, uh, and that is right over my head is the Iron Throne. Uh, you can help steer the narrative, dear viewers, uh, by cheering and subscribing and liking and all that other made-up Twitch stuff. Uh, you will watch the health meter on the Iron Throne go down. Uh, every time the Iron Throne is seized uh, and the stream boss is defeated, uh, you will get a destiny point that you can give to a player character or non-player character of your choice. So it can be your favorite of the young scions of House Nymerian. It can be an allied NPC. It can be whoever they are fighting against. It is all up to you. Uh, it can just be like one of your favorite characters from the books or shows. Uh, so whoever's around that you feel like helping out, you give them a destiny point, and that's got some powerful uh, in-game benefits. Uh, and whoever has the Iron Throne at the very end of the episode uh, has seized it and claimed it and established a dynasty that will last for 14 days. Uh, and by having the Iron Throne at the end, uh, you can give a royal boon to the house or nominally the other organization uh, of your choice. Normally it's going to be a noble house, but if somebody was really like, fuck yeah, I love the gold cloaks or whatever, then you could kind of choose an organization like that. Hey, let's give the royal boon to the Night's Watch. Like, hasn't really come up yet in game, but it's normally going to be a normal, uh, a noble house, uh, but some sort of organization is an option. So, uh, there are ways that viewers can absolutely help steer and wind and motivate and shape the narrative uh, in a very twisty, turny, George R. R. Martin-y way, which will sometimes help your young protagonists, sometimes help the many, many antagonists that are out to suck the marrow from their bones. And, uh, I mean, nothing, whatever, you guys are fine. Everything's fine. It's just a turny. Everything's so, fine. Uh, that's where we're at on the PC front on the Iron Throne and kind of stream boss front, we have a few very quick uh, kind of disclaimers to slap on this Mama Jama just for this episode. Uh, that is Kevin, Sir Van and Rivers, is not feeling real well today. So if he has to make a, uh, a hasty retreat, we will find an in-game way to cover for him. Luckily, uh, Sir Van probably has a bunch of like internal bleeding or something right now. Uh, so if he just has to take off, he just has to take off. Uh, so because... Yeah. Several of the players got pretty beat up last episode, and it could sneak up on him. Also, uh, Ash, who is sitting right below me here in Twitch, uh, is actually sitting very far from home in Scotland, the way Scotland measures distances. Um, in Texas, 90 miles is like, yeah, that's where the grocery store is. 
But in Scotland, 90 Across miles now. is a is a several week trek uh, as you're dragging <laughs> bands of Highland Raiders, uh, wildlings that are coming south of the wall. Um, and, you know, of course, they don't have actual vehicles and stuff there. It's all just one big movie set uh, is the secret. Uh, so uh, <laughs> Ash's internet connection is just a little I... weebly woobly. Ash no. isn't on his home computer is the real issue. Um, so Ash might be having some kind of lag issues uh, and all that. Felicia broke her glasses like a goddamn child. So if her face looks crooked, <laughs> that's why. Uh, and it really feels like Erica is the most reliable party member. And for once, Robert has has drifted and slacked his way into being the second favorite child of House Nymerian. <laughs> Mostly because expectations are pretty low and he has a shirt on. <laughs> That's low where expectations we're at. and slow and steady. <laughs> you are oh, shirts. God. You're on thin ice, mister. Uh, so, I was going to say, you're being very unfair, Rusty. They actually have a vehicle in Scotland now. It's golf powered. They yeah. golf into like a. They like all a have golf theater. carts. That's all it is. It's golf carts. Um, I hate you. So, um, that's where we're at. So, we have the Scotland. potential for a couple of we're tech great issues. Um, uh, it's okay. If they get mad, they have to cross the narrow sea and get to us and stuff. So, whatever. We'll be fine. Uh, the famous Scottish temper does not intimidate us this far away. Plus, also, just Ash is so adorably frustrated sometimes. And we got to help Ash get into character as Adam uh, by picking on him a little bit. Help, that, help the social anxiety rise to the surface for, uh, for oh, character. Oh, it is there. <laughs> this is all method acting. That's all this is. So, uh, I believe with all that out of the way, we are basically caught up. Uh, and we're going to pick up more or less where we left off last episode. Uh, we were finalizing uh, the kind of quarterfinals, I think it was, of the joust. Um, and in that third phase of the, the joust, uh, two of the three members of House Nymerian uh, fought tooth and nail, uh, but were very narrowly defeated. The third of them, uh, Bela, was very narrowly successful. Uh, as I recall, I think all three of those fights uh, were literally down to like one or two health points going the other way. Um, so they were very hard fought bouts uh, with a few opponents that didn't back down when they probably should have because they were fighting a, a bastard or a woman uh, and their pride kept them in it uh, just long enough for a few uh, decisive final blows. Bad um, choice. Around. Yeah, bad choices from everyone, really, um, because everyone's a little bit beat up right now. Uh, but Bela did make it into the final eight. Uh, we had some uh, kind of romance going on in the Maester's tent, which is not normally <laughs> where romance happens. Because yeah, uh, you you say that, but <laughs> like they they are those, it's lonely in the Citadel. Yeah, those sexy clanging old men. Uh, really hit some buttons, apparently. Uh, oh, young men! Mostly the uh, fortified wine and the milk of the poppy, I think, along with the occasional concussion. Uh, so we had a little bit of general hospital uh, going on. We had some uh, Riverlander crooning of the Dornishman's wife uh, as that romance kind of bubbled to the surface. Uh, and then we also had a bit of romance and mischief uh, going on back in the uh, pavilion tent. Uh, where House Nymerian uh, was uh, nursing their wounds and rubbing a little salt in the wounds of their opponents uh, with very generous casks of wine uh, being granted to some vanquished foes uh, that led to the squire of House Nymerian, uh, young Oris Waters, giving a single lingering glance at the retreating Maya Stone, who is a tall and strong and bastard, uh, woman wearing breeches and he's just kind of not really seen women in tight breeches before but also she was just a bastard so he probably wouldn't get stabbed for enjoying the view as she walked away and also she's tall and strong and doesn't make him feel like a giant so he emoted one single line of text of watching her walk away uh, and then uh, Lucaris by way of Satan uh, got involved 
and the situation just spiraled all out of control. Uh, and Ash had a, a really solid scene as young Adam raved into his pillow uh, with a dear diary moment. Uh, and Bela turned into the surprisingly empathetic uh, big sister uh, who, who heard out young Adam with some young kind of heartbreak and and jealousy and all that and like she didn't stab anybody and we were all very <laughs> proud of Bela. Uh, she actually for gave her... some good advice. Yeah, she had so, damn good advice. Yeah, was... her, her her answer wasn't like shank him, uh, not even <laughs> once. So uh, it was uh, well, shanking, everyone surprised, yeah, right? <laughs> including Bela. Uh, so yeah, Bela was feeling kind of sappy, romantic, and sentimental uh, after her own brush with love or at least lust or at least opium um and we had uh just a really fun wrap up to that episode um with some of the characters emotions and personal goals and stuff uh rising to the fore uh and we're just gonna kind of pick it up a nebulous later that evening um because everyone's kind of been taking it easy uh, most of the ransoms are largely caught up um, or can be can be paid later, but everyone's kind of mostly up on their coin. Uh, there isn't a several day backlog of ransoms like we had several episodes ago when eight or ten people were all stopping by. So everyone, uh, including many of the knights that you've all bested, like people are just kind of licking their wounds and taking it easy uh, and getting healed up. Uh, so we're going to open with some necessary mechanical kludge there because you guys are uh, still nursing some wounds and there's the possibility of some die rolls coming up in the near future. So everybody that is saddled with wounds, go ahead and get me five dice ready and you're going to roll five and keep four. Uh, we're going to say that is the kind of abstraction of all the maesters helping you get bandaged up between maesters and apprentices. So your injuries are gone. Um, we're handling these kind of tourney level injuries uh, like their fatigue and they're going to go away pretty quickly. But we are going to work on, on getting rid of, of some of these wounds uh, and just assuming everyone continues to take it easy uh, and nobody's picking fights and stuff. Uh, we'll let you try to get in a little bit better shape before we move on mechanically to the next day. So we'll just get this kludgy dice rolling out of the way, even though technically it's not happening until the next morning. Uh, we'll just get that out of the way as everyone is describing how and where they're taking it easy. Uh, because your options there are the pavilion tent, which is living a little bit more roughly, but you've also got nice rooms back at the green tree uh, with food ready to go and warm drink and a soft bed and all that. Um, so the injured folk will be making that call. Uh, and we're just gonna kind of open with a, a montage of where people are spending their night uh, type of thing. Uh, and maybe even describing your bandages and stuff for those of you that are, that are as wounded as can be. Well, right now we'll be sleeping back at the green tree in an actual bed instead of on the cot because, well, I can. <laughs> Compelling argument. And I'm a uh, little spoiled. Also a fair assessment of your character. Uh, and uh, it's, nobody really holds it against them. Why sleep in a tent if you don't have to? Uh, if that's not what you're used to. Um, Raina's also not beat all to shit. Uh, she has long since healed up her damage. Uh, so any bandages that she is sporting are purely for show. Um, shame on you. So I know you don't have a healing role to make. Uh, is there anyone that you're particularly looking for at the green tree? Well, are the Lugas, the Lugai, are they, are they present today? Uh, the elder brother, Sir Nathan, is there. Um, and we'll say that Everyone at the green tree will have the option of, of hanging out with at least him. Uh, and we'll see who else people might be looking for at the green tree when we get to them. Um, Luke, you probably had a healing role to make. 
And you're also probably on your way to the green tree. Uh, so first off, how did that healing roll fall together for you? Uh, looks like I have 15 altogether. All right, that should be enough. I think I just had the one wound. Yeah, uh, I think your fight was a little bit less uh, down to the wire as some of the others. <laughs> yeah, I bowed out to stay fresh with the melee, so. Yeah, give me one second as I double check the difficulty there. Um, you didn't really do anything super gnarly after that. Uh, because the healing difficulties tend to be based on the amount of physical activity that you're doing. Uh, but I'm going to keep yours at light or no. Um, so yeah, that's enough. Uh, we will go ahead and knock off that uh, that wound for you. So kind of cinematically, you're still kind of bruised and battered. Uh, you uh, might still uh, have some bandages wound around your ribs and, and that sort of thing. Uh, but tourney combat being tourney combat, you're you're doing pretty okay. Um, let's check on your big sister, uh, who also had, uh, and I know, I believe you had more than one wound, uh, to try to tackle here. Um, so how bandaged up is Bela, uh, and what was your healing test like? So my healing test was a 16, and I had a nice, uh, gash in my side, so I had some bandages there, and the worst of it, I think, was on my hands, so those are probably fairly wrapped up, um and covered yeah sir Marin trent was uh pretty cruel to your spear hands um in an attempt to kind of violently disarm you um right now that yeah he is a dick uh that is good enough to remove one wound uh you need a nine for one wound you need a 19 uh for two wounds uh Uh, so yeah what's up uh, Luke's going to keep a close eye on Bela and make sure she's escorted back to the green tree. Sure. Um, she got she's pretty beat, beat up out there, so. Yeah. Um, there is the potential. I don't know how your bonus die came up on that roll, because you should have been rolling five, keeping There's four. There's a one. If you're, okay, so not, not going to be worth keeping. Um, <laughs> but you're still up a wound, uh, at least. Uh, but that's going to be some lingering damage uh on the morrow uh and speaking of lingering damage sir vannon also got beat pretty whooped uh so i believe you were nursing also two wounds correct correct how did your healing roll come i have a 20. all right then uh that's gonna be enough to shake off both of those wounds um how bandaged up are you looking um any particularly cinematic injuries to make the ladies swoop uh the blood of the first men flows strong uh in this particular case there's uh probably some like bruising across the bottom of his jaw he's got a black eye but you know it's honestly kind of looking like a distinguished shiner rather than a good gods who beat the hell out of this man uh, right. Everything else is covered up by clothes. So, so uh, everyone is uh, able to nurse their wounds. Uh, I'm assuming Vannon was also retiring to the green tree, uh, especially because that's where Bela was going. Uh, and not that a sort stalker, of <laughs> right? But also uh, yes. <laughs> but also yes. But uh, but yes. Uh, also, we had discussed possibly hiring some guards. Um, you had. Uh, that's something that you probably don't need to worry about here in King's Landing um, so much. I was under the impression it was mostly looking into, like, caravan guards for the ride home. Uh, I didn't know that you were looking into guards for here in town. Well, we've had... Uh, yeah. so I'm misunder- we've had kettle blacks coming after us in alleyways. I'm sorry, I've had kettle blacks coming after me in alleyways. People that's why probably we don't-, don't go anywhere alone anymore. Okay, just uh, <laughs> just making sure nobody's going to mug us for our sweet, sweet bet winnings or something. Are we going to use the buddy system? Yeah. Uh, and yes! really, you guys aren't uh, <laughs> you guys aren't generally carrying around giant sacks of coin. Uh, you're still wagering throughout the tourney uh, with kind of writs of credit from Illyrio Mopatis 
as tallies are tallied uh, and that sort of thing. You may very well have a nice chest of coin for the journey home or that sort of thing. But uh, as you begin to reach large sums, noblemen kind of don't uh, bother with carrying actual coin around because they're noblemen, right? Um, so, so yeah, you're not having to lug around uh, giant sacks with dollar signs on the side uh, or anything like that that's marking you as particularly vulnerable. Um, so, uh, we are going to handle uh, the, the green tree initially, uh, as that is where four of the PCs are. Uh, and as you make your way there, uh, you can hear the general raucous singing uh, that lets you know ahead of time uh, that Sir Nathan Lugas is in attendance and uh, that Lyle Brewer, the owner and the guy who brews the booze there, uh, is, is making good coin off of the rowdy Sir Nathan. Um, and as you actually enter the green tree um, and you get that smell of of cooking mutton, uh, the brewing beer, uh, the uh, kind of smoky interior of a tavern from some people busting out, uh, you know, pipes and, and that sort of thing, along with the the fire, you know, the cook fire and the hearth fires going. Um, and you're also, you know, just wrapped up in the heat of a building full of people and all that, uh, as well as the good cheer. Um, you do see Nathan Lucas uh, leading a, a rousing chorus of some Dornish marcher uh, fighting songs. Uh, you see um, his sister, Marita Lugas, uh, kind of sitting in a, a corner booth uh, with their brother, Orton, who is uh, very slender and lean-faced and has his nose in a book uh, as he tends to. Um, and they're sitting there uh, sharing the occasional kind of sibling, long-suffering look uh, as her betrothed, Sir Langley Woods, um, is, is sitting between them, uh, chattering on about the tourney uh, and talking about, uh, you know, such and such with a lance. And did you see the size of that horse? We surely don't breathe them that way uh, north of the neck. And... Uh, I've never seen such fine plate mail. Even the little squires had it. Uh, talking about oh, Scions of House plate. Lannister and you know things like that. So he's just kind of uh, motor mouthing about how great the city is uh, and how wealthy the Southerners are because uh, he's in the North, so everyone's a Southerner and all that. And um, she is doing the uh, look, just kind of pointedly ignoring him with a uh, glass of wine in her hand uh, and just like desperately ignoring him um, uh, in a very arranged marriage type of way. Uh, so perhaps it's a little understandable. Um, and Orton just seems to be kind of oblivious to it all, sitting with his book. Uh, he's got a, uh, it's not quite a lantern, it's kind of a covered candle. You know, they've got like the, the glass thing that goes around a candle just to diffuse the light a little bit and kind of cover it. So it's not really sure what the difference is between that and a lantern. It's not oil or anything. It's just a candle, but it's got a little thing. Uh, and he is hunched over a, a book. Um, and occasionally, um, and you notice if you pay attention, it's literally every time he turns a page, he nods and goes, mm-hmm. Uh, so like he's barely going through the motions of paying attention to the people around him. Um, he is the one that arranged the marriage uh, in the first place, so he perhaps feels a little obligated to uh, pretend to give a damn. Um, so that's what we got. And then there's a general small horde of, uh, you know, just tavern goers, some men-at-arms and retainers and just Kingslanders. Uh, but you do also hear uh, augmenting Sir Nathan's uh, coarse Stormlander bellow, the even coarser bellow of Alisane Mormont, the young she-bear, uh, who does not know the words to Dornish March's fighting songs, but is by the seven not letting that stop her. Uh, so she's just kind of la 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 ra ra, uh, along with the tune with everyone else 
uh, drunk uh, enough. I like to interject as we enter the yeah. scene. <laughs> so uh, that is what you guys see uh, as the doors enter uh, and the four of you go in. Don't worry, Ash slash Adam. <laughs> uh, we are going to go back to the pavilion tent before we cut for the night. Uh, so you're not going to be completely ignored. Uh, I, I was, I was just, I was under the impression I was also in the green tree. Let's... Okay, uh, you guys can be. Uh, that means Oris will be with you uh, because yeah, Raina has made it clear nobody could go solo. Uh, so yeah, that, yeah, cool, the fine. whole party will yeah. be there then. Yeah, uh, that's likely just... with a couple retiring back to the pavilion later. So. As we uh, as we enter, I'm going to yell. Uh, how come everywhere we go, we run these goddamn Luguses? I'm going to stare at Nathan. And then after he kind of looks back, very seriously, I'm going to crack a smile and grin. Uh, <laughs> and that's not far from fighting words. Uh, because remember, that region of the Stormlands and the Reach uh, are called oh, yeah. Dornish Marches. Because that's where the Dornish marched through to go a murdering and vice versa. I, I am specifically so, playing yeah. off that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, as you all have been most of the week. Uh, so the song kind of peters out for a second. Uh, and then he yeah, just everything goes, goes silent oh. for me. <laughs> uh, and he comes charging your way uh, for a bear <laughs> as though you are a long lost friend and not someone he literally met in this inn like five days ago. For a split uh, second, yeah. my, my hand goes to my small sword as, as I get charged by a large uh, Stormlander. However, uh, realizing what's going on, I loosen up, I extend my arms and do a hug, and go, you son of a bitch, good job out there. Uh, he will He will kind of nod and, and grin, uh, and his big, you know, he's got like a, a crooked nose from breaking and face... Uh, like a like a battleship, right? He's just got this prominent, heroic jaw and and this huge muscular neck, and and he just kind of nods at you in a way that's quite a bit. dangerously close to a headbutt. Uh, his enthusiastic <laughs> nod, uh, uh, and he's like, oh, "I'll get the bastard next time." And uh, yeah, yeah, you almost had him, uh, and that sort of thing. He goes, I did almost have him, Peck. Pack. Uh, and he looks around, and his his much abused squire uh, is in the background, uh, sopping up some stew with some rolls. And he looks up, and uh, on cue, uh, just a bellowed Peck. He leans <laughs> over, and, and sharing the booth with Peck is just the pair of like tourney scarred kite shields uh, that he kept, that Nathan Lucas kept from his prior opponents, uh, as as kind of his his trophies. Uh, he, he does not ransom back all of their armor. He very pointedly keeps a couple of trophies. So he's still uh, got the trophies say, on uh, display. Peck still has to sit with them. And, yeah. Well, what was left of it? Classy move. Very classy. Ah, he's the one that broke the damn thing. He can keep right? the shards of it. It's his fault. I, I bet had he drink half of what you had the night before, he had a one. Ah, uh, if he drank half of what I had the night before, he'd have died. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna yell uh, to the uh, to, to the tavern keeper. Uh, 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 round for everybody. Uh, you get a bellow of uh, of gratitude from generic tavern goers, uh, and a downright uh, bearish roar uh, from Alisane Mormont, um, who. Uh, also, you know, toast you with her drinking horn, um, and uh, yeah, uh, drinks are are passed around, uh, and the the situation is further lubricated. Um, so, who else is looking for some lugai interactions? Uh, remembering that physical stuff should stay kind of to a minimum, uh, so nobody start a brawl brawl, or you're gonna be in some trouble with those healing rolls. Uh, but yeah, who else we got? I imagine there's a grunt in pain as he embraces us. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> I'm the only one who's not injured. Yeah, yeah so... I'm I'll... not injured! <laughs> okay, now... <laughs> but you murdered someone, so your soul is injured. 
that's a little strong. <laughs> <laughs> she she has a tally on her sword belt, not an injury. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm uh, gonna grab so, some some wine, and then go to talk to uh, Nate and Lucas. Uh, Nathan is right there with yeah. Lucaris. He is easy to find, and in fact, hard not. All right, um, I'm gonna try to toast the the melee coming up. Say cheers for the melee. Uh, you get a another roar from everyone. Uh, the melee is a favorite of the highborn that are here. Well, of Nathan at least. <laughs> Orton doesn't care. Marita doesn't care. Uh, but Langley Woods, sitting between them, uh, does cheer. Uh, he tries to get to his feet to cheer appropriately and almost spills his drink, uh, which gets him a withering stare from Orton, who kind of pointedly slides the book away from him um, and, and kind of hunkers over it protectively. Uh, and you're reminded, Langley Woods is like all elbows needs an Adam's apple. Right, he's just that almost uh, like almost like Goofy the character, like almost that caricature type of long, just really skinly, kind of ungainly uh, dude um, that looks awkward, kind of when he does anything, um, but trying to stand up at like a booth uh, and and he like bangs his knees on it as he stands and almost spills and almost falls. Uh, you can see Marita rolling her eyes, like, across the tavern, like, as her dashing beloved uh, almost, you know, bashes the table and spills drinks and stuff. She's like, ah. um, And uh, so it's a little awkward, but he is joining in. Alisane Mormont joins in the cheer. Um, so all the highborn, except for Orton and Marita, but all three of them are in... Uh, the melee and are looking forward to it quite clearly, but also the kind of nameless, faceless tavern goers. Uh, small folk love a melee. Uh, they love watching highborn people beat each other up. Um, <laughs> and this is more of that, right? It's not just two at a time, like a joust. Uh, it's, it's almost 50 of the, the, the gold drunk bastards uh, wailing on each other with weapons uh, to the last man. So like small folk love that shit. Um, so yeah, you get a rousing cheer comparable to the round uh, that Lucaris paid for uh, <laughs> from the, the general. You're like, this the fucking melee. I love that. You guys are going to hurt each other so bad and no small folk get drafted into it by the thousands. Like, this is the best. <laughs> like, that's the that's the general tone uh, of Great. the cheer. Alright, uh, so then I'm going to just try to start, start up a conversation about the the melee some um Nathan, who you he looking out for in this melee like who are the who's the uh, big teams we need to watch out for don't worry i'll protect you dornish lot <laughs> Yo. girls bastards and drunkards the lot of you <laughs> hey. i meant you luke you're hey. the drunkard I, i'm more of a, uh, of a horror right <laughs> uh, yeah i was, was kind of gonna... <laughs> If that's the only three categories, I have no idea which one. Maybe <laughs> the girls. Don't worry, boy. You're still growing. Oh, there's still time. There's a booze here and a horror place across the street. You... Yes, I suppose with uh, you it always comes down to a question of order rather than priority. Uh, and then he, he gives Bela kind of a fuzzy look <laughs> as the wheels churn. And he goes, oh, you meant, who am I worried about? Yeah. And then he leans in conspirationally, like makes a big show of looking over his shoulders, uh, casting a, a wary lant, a glance at Alisane, and, and, uh, the, and he leans in real close, and he goes, Bruh! and burps right in your ear, and he goes, not a one of them! <laughs> they worry about me! Um... And I, saw that it's, coming. It's, uh, it does not help your concussion headache. Um, uh, but yeah, he is uh, drunk or just confident enough to, to be drunk or just confident enough uh, to, to not 
seemingly be very worried. All right, let me uh, try a different tactic then. <laughs> like he, uh, you, you know that a few hours ago he got his ass beat by Bronze Yon Royce one on one. Um, so like maybe he should be worried about Bronze Yon Royce. Uh, you know, like like you know that there are people he should be worried about, but he does not. Uh, he does not seem to be taking common sense to heart. Is there anyone you're looking forward to knocking out of the melee? Like, who's your uh, first, who's your priority? Who are you going for first? That whoremonger bronze yawn. Revenge, uh, then. Unless, unless all 48 of you other bastards are in the way. <laughs> but even if they are, <laughs> yeah, we'll see where the seven place us, though. But, no, there's a reckoning coming to House Royce. <laughs> Great. He says, <laughs> troubling <Great>. Super. <laughs> it's Bronze Yon Royce! Yeah. <laughs> I, I, when oh, it comes down cool. to it, we should probably gang up on him so he's, you know, distracted by multiple people, I think. That way, when his back is turned to you, you can get a strike in, or I can kind of hobble him a little bit so you can get a nice wallop on him. Oh. So you can... Womp him in the in the joust, right? Well, or is that gives, going to be yeah. that's, that's not who I'm facing first, though. Okay, never mind. Uh, he gives you a kind of bleary-eyed look, and he goes, "Well, I mean, some of that eye, but I'll not strike a man from behind. Uh, but you know, a melee is a melee, uh, so it's it's war as you can, uh, but not not dishonorably, no." Uh, I'll not backstab like some some reach knight. Like some wow, Kel Black. Yeah. All right, well then I can you know, two of us in the front. He can block my spear and then not dodge your your axe or whatever it is you use. Sword. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't insert whatever. I haven't he decided. I, I haven't decided what to bring to the melee yet. I don't like to plan things in advance. Go we with my gut. Play it by ear. Stormlanders. And he leans in kind of uncomfortably close again. <laughs> I, Stormlanders. I uh, he goes, <laughs> Stormlanders, oh. let their passions guide them. Oh. Yeah, yeah. In, indeed. <laughs> it's worked well for you so far. Uh, any sarcasm... Uh, slithers off him like spilled <laughs> ale off the duck's back. It's only half sarcastic. I mean, he's gotten pretty far. He's, uh, a, he's a warrior, man. I mean, no doubt. Uh, Alisane Mormont will, uh, I was going to say, will bull her way into the conversation, but she will bear her way uh, into the conversation. Uh, just kind of unabashedly shouldering herself into the small circle of you. Uh, just kind of... Uh, and and hey, just kind of bronze her way in. And she goes, I'll tell you who I'm looking for. Is it a fray? Yeah. That Beric Dondarian. He oh, owes yeah. me a rematch. And this time, he won't have a stinking horse. <laughs> we'll fight on foot. Like the old gods made us. She's, I think she she's could take weaving, on foot. She, she's weaving a bit uh, as she talks, uh, but she also sounds quite confident. Um, uh, we would all be fools that are SPD Northerners in the melee. There's more than one of us. There's exactly two of us. <laughs> yes. Uh, and she turns and That's kind of looks around uh, and then raises her drinking horn uh, to Langley, uh, who seems to be still apologizing to his betrothed for his awkwardness and does not notice the toast. Um, but yeah, those are the only two Northmen uh, that are largely that are here, uh, but they're the only two that you've heard of uh, that are in the melee. Uh, the, uh, the, the Laurel and Hardy of Alisane Mormont uh, and Langley Woods. Uh. <laughs> He's like, 
super like like he's the skinny one. <laughs> yes, he is. He is a a beam pole, uh, and she is not. She is not that. Um, but yeah, she sounds absolutely confident that she's going to be looking for uh, Beric Dondarrion and getting herself a rematch. Uh, she's bleary eyedly kind of admits. Now I haven't heard who else is on his seven, but don't care because there's still only seven of them and they won't stop me from getting that pretty boy might be i'll <laughs> steal his cloak ah this a fancy cloak with the that, uh, lightning bolts and such finer that actually raises an interesting point i'm gonna look at right now sister we are not seven and also uh, you're not you... your new gods either uh, you you are actually. Uh, I know that it's been a couple months uh, in oh, real life, but you guys do have a seven stack. It's us. There's myself and you, and Bila, and Vanon, and Ors. The other two are Will of Will, Will. Mm-hmm. and Nate Lucas. Not Will. Yeah, Will of Will, and. Uh, Nate Lucas. Nate uh, Lucas, who's oh Nate. Yep, that so is right. Guys, okay, yeah, my, my you mistake. You guys have a yeah. You are no longer uh, looking for a group. Uh, you have a seven stack ready to queue in the melee. Yeah, and I was okay. waiting to see if anything happened to him before we we circled back to that because okay, yeah, he's the uh, type I just didn't would, remember. So yeah, yeah. he's the type that would get himself super messed up in the joust. <laughs> well. <laughs> So are we, if you look through our group. <laughs> and Will of Wills is not here at the moment, is that correct? Uh, no, you haven't seen okay. him uh, in the uh, in, in drinking and stuff lately. He's been a little scarce most of the week. Uh, you did see him with his ancestral steel sword, or Valyrian steel sword on his hip uh, in in the joust. Um, but you, no one has seen uh, Sir Gennady Shani. Yeah, what happened there? I don't know. It's a mystery. I saw him with the sword, yes. but... Yeah. Huh. He he had the sword when I jousted him on that first day. And now Cousin Will has his own sword back. I don't know. Well, good Could be anything. Maybe he paid him a nice reward for finding his ancestral family sword. What did you do to me, Yes. I'm sure that's exactly what Jenny Shane thought it was. (laughs) On topic of that, uh, you did have Jenny Shanine's ransom waiting for you when you came to the Green Tree a day or two ago, uh, Bela. Um, His reward was left for you with Lyle Brewer. Um, So you got paid that ransom but not like face to face. Just the the coin was waiting for you. Okay. Um, so yeah, but no one's seen Kennedy around for a couple days. That's terrible. Oh no. That concerns me deeply. You're a shitty so, liar, sister. <laughs> uh, any other plans uh, or or NPC interactions here before we? kick on to the next day or um, um, is yeah I would uh, like to ask Allison um, about Sir uh, oh crap Sir Garland like uh, just to find out if she has like any information that might be useful to me um, she will bat her eyelashes almost alarmingly and kind of coo at you in a way fairly reminiscent of Bessa of Flea Bottom <laughs> when she was like, he can butter me buns anytime. <laughs> like, like uh, she leans in for like some girl talk type of stuff and she's like, I, I, uh, I didn't know much about him, but he's a pretty little southerner, isn't he? <laughs> sure um, is. <laughs> You... Yeah, she hasn't really interacted with him uh, or anything that you have uh, noticed or or heard. But does she know much about like turn tournament like rumors? She knows. 
distressingly little about okay. tournaments. Uh, you may recall that she and her squire were using the same battered breastplate oh, as the yes. entirety of their armor. They were sharing the same northern pony. Uh, it's like she's just kind of here because she heard there's a tourney and it might be neat. Uh, <laughs> you suspect she does not have a tourney specialty on her status. Uh, yeah, she's just like, I, I don't know. Uh, I just know he's, he's a pretty one and he seems pretty good in the saddle. People might need to watch out for those Tyrells at these jousts and such. Uh, like she's like <laughs> that say. level of, of like. Oh Captain my gosh, that's adorable. She just, this is this is not her bag. When you said pretty good the saddle, I did not see that sentence ending that way. Right? Because <laughs> it's Allison. <laughs> okay, I, that that's all I was interested in. <laughs> All right. I will just yeah. be polite with the sister, uh, whose name I just forgot. Uh, Maria. With the, okay, uh, Marita Lucas. Uh, as you like approach the table, she gets up and walks towards you. Uh, like, oh, someone has drifted near. That is my excuse. And like, she half-heartedly murmurs, like. Oh, look who it is, Lady Rain. I simply must go. Girl talk. You know how it is. Uh, and she just is like up and away. Um, I will link my arm into Orton, hers and walk her away from the table. Orton murmurs at him, mm -hmm, quite right, uh, as he does not look up from his book. Uh, Langley starts to stammer something like, uh, farewell, beloved. Oh, and she's gone. Well, good. Just, just us then, Orton. Eh. Hmm. Right. And he just, he's just kind of left sitting there um uh but yeah so she will link arms with you uh she's a tall woman um bigger and and burlier she's of an a lugus build uh remember that their mother uh was a clegane uh by birth so she is a uh they're all big a, yes they are are you know she is uh wide hipped and and big boned and and tall um and uh yeah she uh will will link arms with you and, and cheerfully uh be led kind of uh, across the room i i i'm like you seem in distress and in need of an escape <laughs> uh, alas that has been my lot since my family began arranging marriages uh it would seem this latest one is simply a different flavor of distress Oh, he is dreadful. Just so dull. Well, at least he doesn't seem cruel or gross. <laughs> those are <laughs> those would at least be exciting and have been in the past. However, uh unfortunately briefly, of course. I've yet to marry, so I have not had to deal with Either cruel, gross, or boring. <laughs> oh, but uh, I hear you're eating in the, the Red Keep on the morrow, so you'll likely get seconds or thirds of all three. <laughs> she, she rolls wow. her eyes and goes, That king is just my brother writ larger. Wow, that's pretty accurate. I can't argue with that. <laughs> I actually agree heartily. <laughs> Very rarely have so few words meant so much. Right? <laughs> A true poet, Rusty. <laughs> uh, she will cheerfully gossip with you some. Uh, uh, I, you mentioned out of character, you know, the topics of happy marriages. She does have some gossip about Sir Garland and his wife. Yeah. She rolls her eyes and it's like they are dreadfully in love. It is grotesque. Uh, you know, and like it's that sort of like like resentful about their happiness type of thing. Um, but it's not uncommon for Stormlanders and, and Reach folk to travel on the tourney circuit occasionally. And they kind of talk shit about each other, but they're kind of similar. You know, the Reach is just Stormlanders with a bit more class. Uh, but there's enough travel there. Um, and the Tyrell are juicy enough targets of gossip um, that it's it's easy to pick up a few notes like that. So she can certainly be one of the people that you picked up that gossip from that you asked about between sessions. Uh, I am disappointed. <laughs> uh, she's like, 
uh, you and uh, half the women in the realm, and likely more than a few men. He's um, pretty amazing. <laughs> that does leave their corner booth free uh, for the bookish Orton Lugus, the socially awkward Langley Woods, and the bookish and socially awkward Adam to form Voltron uh, <laughs> back in the corner. So... No, it takes um, five to form Voltron? If you um... guys, yeah, so, uh, I'm assuming that you lot aren't likely to start a brawl or anything like that. Um, so I am content to just assume that like the, the I, three... I want to see this you know, brawl. <laughs> yeah. And by brawl, I mean a rousing arguing match over some of old maester magic, sayings. Magic the Gathering uh, breaks out in the corner of the tavern. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, nothing of particular note is likely to happen in that corner. Um, so we're not necessarily going to uh, to role play out that full scene unless you have a particular question that you would like to ask Orton uh, or that type of thing. Uh, I am content uh, that we just kind of uh, fade to black like we would for an awkward lovemaking scene. Yay for awkwardness! Uh, one of the ones that aren't awkward. Yeah, who says they have to be awkward? <laughs> just so I do. Yeah. Uh, he is uh, currently reading The Life of the Triarch Bellico, uh, Volume 2, uh, which is a, a story of a famous triarch of Volantis. Uh, Bellico, a nigh legendary figure. I just see Adam starting a fight. Oh, I found those writings rather uh, reductionist. <laughs> um, as an interesting note, uh, Bellico is named after Bill Belichick uh, of the New England Patriots, uh, which knew, uh, like, George R. Martin George is R. Martin. a. He, he likes his football. Uh, after well, he likes his football. Uh, Bellico, I guess we should be saying Bellicho instead, but anyways, uh, Bellicho was devoured by the Giants. Um, <laughs> George R. Martin loves the New York Giants, so that's the story. Like, like Belichick just got beat by the yeah. Giants is is his is thing, it... and it's a reference to the the Patriots' loss in the Super Bowl. Yeah. Uh, so I, I thought was... it would be right. I, I thought it would be fun. Game. I thought it would be fun <laughs> to the, the real world. That is painful to me. <laughs> I'm just seeing like Mag the Mighty burping. But isn't um, the giant one one named after one of the New York Giants whose number is eleven? Probably. So, one, one. so uh, yes, yeah. yes, that's a reference so, as well. So I thought we'd toss a real world uh, nerdery into the nerdy corner uh, back there. <laughs> um, any particular questions for Orton uh, or things no, there? I mean, no, I mean like um, basically for any viewers who weren't. At last session, um, Adam kind of <laughs> had a bit of a strop and went upstairs and got kind of upset. And so basically what he's done, while well, all of this other chat has been going on, he has calmed down and quietly come downstairs and sat with Orton and asked about his book to, so he doesn't have to talk about how he stormed off about an hour ago and is just kind of embarrassed and you know just kind of trying to talk about anything but that essentially sure uh orton uh does not seem like he would care if you did try to start a conversation about that even like so he is he is a safe space uh his his uh lack of interest in romantic gossip or the the heartbreak of, of young teenagers yeah. means well, I mean, it is not going to come up at all um, yeah, I mean, uh, and Adam's really kind of not, um, I mean, even Bela knowing is too many people knowing, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Um, um, so yeah, so yeah, he's gonna, he's mostly kind of staying quiet and just kind of watching what's going on. Um, speaking of staying quiet, uh, Oris is currently brooding and drinking uh, off by himself here in the tavern. There's uh, a no. Because he was, you're not allowed to stay alone anywhere. 
So he was not back at the pavilion, uh, pavilion tent, uh, but he is just kind of sitting by himself uh, over in at a table um, where he has secured himself a bottle and a cup um, and is doing as, as Oris does when anything is mildly upsetting or confusing to him uh, or when he feels a bad feeling like this might be guilt because he did kind of worry that he was why uh, Adam was upset on account of him eating a turkey leg in front of him and making Adam feel bad about his, <laughs> his uh, injury. But, <laughs> so that was the other person I wanted to talk to, actually. Misunderstanding was awesome. <laughs> yes, so Oris is just kind of sitting. He is not taking part in the singing. Um, he is not, you know, laughing it up with everybody. He's just kind of sitting alone uh, and has turned to the drink uh, because he also just has a lot of coin and he can buy the good stuff. Um, so oh, that is what he is up to. Okay, so I'm going to grab oh, some no. some of the stew and then go sit with him for a little bit to have a, a conversation. Okay. Um, he gives you a grunt of hello uh, as you sit down um, and kind of casts a glance around for like where you got the stew but doesn't like say anything about it. He's just like, oh yeah, Steve, like that sounds pretty good, but not good enough to do anything about it right now. Um, that is the level of emotional attachment you get from him. Okay. Uh, and he also kind of scoots his his bottle and cup away from you a little to make room for the highborn lady at the table, so he's not crowding you. Uh, so he kind of, uh, he manspreads less, right? Like, <laughs> instead of being the looming guy who has claimed this table, to you, he immediately gives up the claim on that table and silences himself down to one small corner of it, conceding territory immediately at the arrival of a highborn. Yeah, and, and picture that with him being like this really large guy too, so he's not small. <laughs> yeah, um, so it's, you know, and it's also, you know, the, the lowborn squire to a hedge knight would claim territory from other lowborn people and look threatening and big and stuff and then immediately stops it when mm -hmm. challenged by a highborn. So it's very much just like an instinctive thing for him to kind of shrink when you come over. Uh, he, you know, just kind of concedes most of the table to you um, quietly, you know, uh, reflexively. Okay. Uh, Horace, how's it going? How are you feeling? He, he shrugs. Uh, I'm fine. Cut's not so bad. Oh, fine. He's really it's not good. fine. It's good. There's uh, a couple big days coming up soon. Um, you looking forward to it? You excited? Uh, hoping to make a good bit of coin and, uh, you know, kind of sad that the squire's joust's almost over. It's sad, but... I mean, out of everyone, you have probably the best chance to win this thing. Yeah, but I found something I'm good at, and I'm going to have to stop doing it soon. Jousting? Oh, you... I wouldn't worry about that too much. I mean, jousting isn't everything. There's, there's a lot of other things you'll get to do now that you're a little higher stationed than you were. There's some new opportunities and unfortunately sometimes that comes with responsibilities too so we get to fill he gives you a time. bit of a he gives you a bit of a wary look like this is leading to something <laughs> uh, he doesn't comment <laughs> uh, but you can just kind of see his eyes narrow a little like like all right here it is the highborn wants something get get to it right it's like that <laughs> yeah. that other kind of instinctive look he doesn't question or interrupt. He just yeah. tenses for the blow. Uh, well, you know we're going to the the big feast tomorrow night. I'm, I'm guessing you're a little nervous about that, right? He answers by finishing his cup of spirits <laughs> and pouring another. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're not the only one that's nervous about that, so I it's completely normal like this is the king and there's a lot of 
high people there, and I don't know, like it's not really castle folk. Yeah, I don't. I don't understand you castle folk and your rules. That lady had her teats out, but then I got yelled at for saying that lady's got her teats out. I don't. I don't get castle feasts. I, I think the the only real rule I've been able to figure out is to try to not offend people. I that's the only thing that's kept me from I don't know embarrassing myself too much. I don't know if that's even good advice, but that's he uh, he snorts a little, but does not comment. Yeah, um, so, so about the joust, though, um, something maybe a little bit more familiar for now. Uh, so my opponent tomorrow, Sir Garland, I, have you heard a, a lot of, like, rumors or such just, like, hanging around the, the tournament yards? Uh, only about the last dozen years or so. Oh, really? That's about how long he's been a page slash squire to Willy Will, who has made his living entirely as a tourney knight. Okay. Uh, it was Oris's attempt at a joke. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so I'm, you know, the with the melee coming up, I'm a little concerned. Uh, or in, I hold up my hands of, you know, not being totally ready for the melee or not even being able to give my all at the the joust tomorrow either and the reputation of sir garland's pretty high what what do you think the odds are that just knocking him off his horse will be enough to get him to to stop i, I don't know if i can keep taking this fight to the ground every time uh he gives you a look with kind of one eyebrow quirk just a little and he slides his full cup of spirits across the table to you <laughs> and okay. shrugs. You, you don't know? Well, what about other... Have you been in any other tournaments where he's been there and there is a melee? Or, like, does he seem to... Well, I guess this is a little different because it's not normal for people to take the fight to the foot. Okay. He just nods down at the the, the drink. Very pointedly. <laughs> the drink. The the okay. drink that he offered you. Alright, I'll uh, like he, take he the gave drink. It, Yeah, it's uh it's hard liquor. Uh it's it's the uh you know, Kingslander whiskey type of thing. <laughs> uh it, yeah <laughs> and uh and he just kind of gives you a shrug. That's all I can think to do to get ready for that. Drink harder. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you're definitely larger than any of the other squires here. Just bash them with that maul. Destroying their armor, I think, I think that's what's going to work for you. It's worked so far. I mean... Or the spear, or just whatever it is one of you gives me. It doesn't matter. Uh, I, I think the mall is going to be the best bet. He gives a non committal shrug. Uh, right. it, was a, it was a confident, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Like a, a certainty <laughs> of like, whichever thing you guys give me, I will win. Uh, but it's. Like I said, he's got kind of a fatalistic optimism, and like he is, he seems incredibly certain that he is going to win, but he also is incredibly certain that he's not going to get to do this again, maybe ever. Like that sort of, you know. So he's just like he is a, a guy that's dealing with the fact that this might be the best week of his life. Like that's the vibe you've got from him. He's like, Willie will never ever let him do this before. He's concerned he's never going to get to do it again. Uh, he knows he's going to win, but he's already moved past the winning and is morose about like getting in trouble for it. So it's just a weird uh, Wait. kind of gloomy, confident Oris. Getting uh, in trouble <laughs> for winning? 
because uh, remember, uh, again, it's it's been a long time in real life, but yeah. Wooly Will never ever let him fight against anyone. Oh, and, uh, and the reason was because never let him spar against other squires, yeah. much less do squires jousts. Uh, he has only ever sparred and tilted against Wooly Will and the occasional unlucky bandit. Um, so, like, this is his his like coming out party and Wooly Will isn't here and also the one authority figure he's had his whole life is probably going to punish him for this so Oris is in a you know Oris is being gloomy and broody for a reason um I just wanted to kind of remind you guys of some of that uh in his he's only doing this because you guys let him yeah. um he has never been allowed yeah, to it, do it before if I remember right it, he was given the instructions not to like make himself too public right right yes yeah uh yeah yeah <laughs> and here it goes about and to we've win. pretty much just completely ignored that yeah. <laughs> uh so uh yeah he's just uh he is certain he's going to win and he is resigned to losing in the long term after winning the the joust and that All sort right. of thing that's the uh that's his mood at the moment <laughs> Uh, well, look, um, so far this week's been pretty good, and uh, let's let's make the most of it and, and enjoy the the last few days we have here in King's Landing. Uh, you hear Luke stroke from behind you? Yeah, Luke. Uh, say, so, uh, would you get a moment? Can I speak to you? Sure. I was just finishing up here with Oris. No, oh, yes, of course. Uh, he steps away. He's not like spying or anything. Just a uh, regular dude. Okay. Um, yeah. So Oris, Oris gives you a little toast uh, with his refilled glass, and you are sent on your way. If you, whenever you want yeah. to. Oris, unsurprisingly, does not drag out the conversation. Okay, I'll leave the uh, the stew there since it looked like he was eyeing that pretty. Pretty good and say here why don't you finish this for me he can uh, always eat as you stand up he shifts his posture and stuff and like reclaims the table as his mm -hmm. uh including reaching out and like just hauling the stew over <laughs> uh he doesn't start on it immediately he casts a wary eye around the tavern for anyone else out to like take his food or drink or privacy uh you know and he just kind of does this kind of it, it, it's official he's our dog it's not a dog. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so we will go to uh, Lucaris and uh, Bela then. Seems like that's where the cameras go. Yeah. Uh, Luke, what? As uh, speak? Bela approaches, I'm going to uh, slowly reach out and grab one of her injured hands, kind of look it over. The bastard really did a number on you, didn't he? Yeah, it, it'll be fine in like a day or so. Like it. It looks worse than it is, just because it's like fingers. But I saw those yeah. hits. It was well. I just wanted to say you did a hell of a job. So thanks. It was, that was a really tough fight. Um, I I thought for a, a few times uh, a few of those blows were going to take me out of the fight, but somehow. I, the adrenaline or, or just something in me just kept me going. Well, you had the warrior with you that day. I, to something be honest, I wish I had to the wind mine as well, but and you should have pulled out probably. He did probably. quite a bit, but I'm glad you won. Thank Very you. Very proud. Thank you. I'm proud and of you. And they'll think twice. Between your win and, uh, and the rate of killing that kid, uh, they'll think twice before fucking with you. I chuckle a bit at that, uh, assuming it's a joke, <laughs> and I, I say, yeah, I imagine, I imagine they will. Uh, Luke kind of nods and he looks around. He kind of looks out of the doorway towards the pillow house across the street, and looks back at the rest of the uh, tavern. Okay, I just wanted to check it on you. Um, are you going to be okay for the mail? Yeah, I think so. As, as long as I 
don't pick up any more injuries like this, yeah, I should be fine. Uh, let's try something. When it actually begins, why don't you hold back a bit? Stay behind the rest of us. Reserve your strength for the end. Yeah. I, honestly, I was kind of thinking along the same lines. I'm going to, like, both me and Rana might be a bigger target, especially me making the name that I did on the, the tourney field and, and perhaps our house in general. It seems like everyone is really upset with us. And I don't know. That, yeah, anyhow. I, uh, I should talk I think, to Raina about this, but as a strategy, we should probably let the rest of the group do as much damage to each other as they can. But you specifically just stay, yeah. stay behind the lines and uh, rest up and heal. And then when the rest of them are exhausted, yeah, I'll, you get better. I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure Nathan's going to probably charge somewhere, knowing him. Um, I don't want to abandon him. We should probably stay close, but I, I do agree we should not try to like enter the center of, of the big melee and have everyone fighting us at once. If he gets too far out, I will join him. I'm not going to let him go alone, but um, ultimately you two are more important, so. Well, the whole Aww. team's important. <laughs> Ultimately, you two are more important, he says, glancing at the whorehouse across the street. <laughs> uh, oh. Which he does, yeah. Uh... Are you looking to uh, head across the street tonight? Road trip! Quia uh, Thorn suggested I should cut back on that, and I, I've been trying. <laughs> well, I mean, it doesn't make any difference to me. I don't, I don't really care. Um... But for maybe the next couple of days, I mean, she has information gatherers in many places. I don't know. It, I mean, it's up to you. It, well, it, I don't really. Well, um, <laughs> fooling her for a day or two isn't going to matter. But well, at least you I... can honestly say that you have cut back. And, <laughs> and I'm pretty <laughs> sore too, so. So unless anyone in the chat wants to encourage me, uh, Luke is going to stay not at the whorehouse tonight. I'm All very right. proud of him. That comes after the melee. Uh, any other right, I don't particular see anyone role plays so tonight? <laughs> no, I, I'm good. Uh, at that point, Luke will, will get some drinks and uh, try to get some sleep before it's too late. Sensible. All right. Although um, I do want to run something by Reyna before the e next evening, but for right now, I'm good. Um, there is likely room to stay at the Green Tree uh, if this is where Adam wants to stay the night. Um, yeah. Um... There's the, you know, Oris <laughs> can sleep in the common room, Adam can sleep with Reyna or Bela or Luke or Van, you know, so there's mm -hmm. rooms aplenty. Or he pours company. I could. Um, I mean, if nothing else, once kind of Bela's walked away, Adam will be kind of uh, trying to subtly but quickly kind of get around to and go, but, 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 you, you didn't tell him anything about what we talked about, right? What? No, of course not. Oh, thank God. Sorry, <laughs> I'm. Look, <laughs> just. just yeah, just don't don't tell anyone, please. No, it's fine. Mum's the word. Thank you. All right. Uh, anything else going on this evening, or are we clear to jump cut to the next morning uh, as the jousts are preparing to renew? Let's do it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, so. Uh, we will cut to the next day. Uh, bandages have been changed. Clean clothes have been found. Breakfast has been eaten. The sun is well into the sky uh, before uh, the tilting needs to continue uh, on this uh, next day of the tourney. 
uh, because one of the upside uh, is that as the field gets more narrow, uh, it takes a lot less time uh, for for things to go on. Uh, so it's kind of mid morning, uh, let's say late morning, going to make ten thirty ish in people terms. That early. Uh, before the fourth round of the joust. Uh, because King Robert doesn't want to miss the good shit. Um, and the knights get kind of center stage as high sun approaches. The squire's joust will be in the afternoon when it's a lot more hotter. Uh, a lot more hotter, I said as an adult. Uh, when it is a lot hotter and more miserable in their armor and stuff. Uh, so the squires get moved to the afternoon uh, to suffer and bake. Um, while the knights have nice you know kind of late morning and 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 that sort of thing so uh you are once again uh able to to reach a fantastic viewing spot uh here uh right on the the edge of the tourney ground where they've got kind of those that bench style seating set up and also a few small areas of just where people stand and mingle um you are able to stand and mingle once again uh, with Illyrio Mopatis, uh, who has been uh, cheerfully wedgering with the lot of you um, and uh, apparently effortlessly uh, keeping track of, of said wagers and debts and payments. Uh, and as always, he greets the lot of you um, effusively, uh, as though you're all long-lost uh, siblings or patrons or, or friends or family of his. Um, and and uh, he also has a, a tray, well, a page with a tray of, of fine red wine uh, already waiting for the lot of you. Um, Bela is going to be at least partially in her armor um, because she is going to be squire or jousting second uh, today. Uh, but there's a little more time between rounds that's not as rushed as the early days. So she still doesn't have to like miss a joust to like go be ready uh, but everyone else can be wearing more kind of casual comfortable stuff uh, Oris is also in his armor um, because he needs to be ready for the squire's joust picking up uh, next um, but uh, everybody gets big greetings um, he bows and kisses a few hands uh, and, and that sort of thing uh, his beard is oiled and perfumed uh, today uh, it's a two forks of, of blue hair uh, matching his flowing blue locks. Uh, they've all been dyed and, uh, and, and very, uh, you know, stylized in the associ manner. Uh, he's very flamboyant and colorful and, and loud and cheerful compared to your average Westerosi highborn. Uh, and uh, the good cheer... I do have a question for you. Uh, go ahead. Um... I know your people tend to use dyes a lot. Do you have anything to remove dye from someone's? Uh, of course, uh, several tinctures are, are kept handy uh, in my humble estate here in King's Landing. Uh, should I feel an urge to uh, adjust the tint of my hair, uh, or if it needs to be cleaned and reapplied? Uh, or that sort of thing. Yes, uh, all manner of things are ready, my friend. I would much Why? appreciate the chance to uh, buy one of those off of you. Ah, of course not. It is yours. What's mine is yours. What's yours is mine. What is ours is ours. We are friends and allies to the end. Nay, family, I say. Uh, I'll bring of some course, tomorrow. Friend, of course. Bring uh, some before, tomorrow. Or before perhaps you need them or perhaps you need them for the feast tonight, yes? Yeah, I'll that have my plan, yes. I'll have my people deliver it to your people. Uh, the green tree, the pavilion, perhaps a vial to each, so that we find you in either place. I always in your debt, of course. Thank you. Ah, you know what on I mean. the topic... You shouldn't say that to him. He might take it serious. On the topic <laughs> of families and debts, however... <laughs> And he turns almost cartoonishly mournful. Uh, <laughs> and he turns to Sir Vannon Rivers. He goes, uh, I am afraid, my friend, uh, that our gaming must come to an end. Um, and he produces from one wide sleeve or perhaps 
behind one of his rings or some little quick sleight of hand thing as though from nowhere he suddenly has two uh, slender ribbons of paper uh, that you instantly recognize as the sort of thing ravens carry. Um, uh, and he uh, holds them out just long enough for you to make out the seals on the end of each. Uh, one of them is of House Blackwood. It's not terribly uncommon to still deliver brief messages uh, in that type of paper in a text instead of email, as it were. Uh, the other, though, you know, must have actually been carried uh, by Raven. Uh, it sports the seal of House Nymerian of Wyvern's Rest. He says, uh, I have been keeping in contact uh, with your Lord Grandfather. He waves to the rest of them, uh, keeping him abreast of our business dealings as his requested. Uh, and uh, alas, uh, he has reminded me uh, that a goodly bit of coin needs must go directly from the pockets of his ward to the coffers of House Nymerian. Uh, one share of the coin that you have amassed this week, uh, I'm afraid, must go directly uh, to the debts of House Nymerian and their furthering of business dealings uh, with me and my estates. Somehow it would seem that your Lord Father uh, also received word of our successful and profitable and very exciting uh, gaming. Uh, and alas, he has also called for one third of your earnings. Uh, I, am, I am a humble businessman and it is not in my station to refuse the lawful request of uh, mighty Lord of the Riverlands. Uh, and it is my understanding that you are still something akin to his property. Though, of course, slavery is abolished in these enlightened lands, uh, you are still, in a way, his. Uh, so I thought it best to break the news myself. I am indeed my father's son in all but name. But thank you for your good sportsmanship. And it is, of course, and I look at everybody else, my pleasure to serve the house Nymerian, whether sword or coin. Uh, we will still be seeing to it. Uh, my people will speak with your people uh, before the tourney's end, uh, and the remainder of your winnings will be delivered to you in the form of your choice. Uh, perhaps also a small rounding error uh, might help the young man against the older. Uh, unfortunate mathematical errors are not uncommon among my people. He says with a weird sense of pride. <laughs> my good lord, I am ever in your service. Uh, and then he turns to the rest of you, spreading his, his broad hands, bejeweled almost grotesquely. Most of his fingers have more than one ring. Most of the rings have more than one stone. Uh, and it just glitters apologetically. And he goes, uh, I'm afraid also your Lord Grandfather has made it clear uh, that one third of all your earnings uh, will be transferred directly to the coffers of House Nymerian. Uh, Grandfather. I am unfamiliar with the familial duties of the proud and noble folk of Westeros, as of course I am a humble businessman from far away. But perhaps again, some small rounding errors. And it has been made clear that the rest of you are free to continue wagering. Uh, but there was some concern about, uh, um, he looks kind of apologetically towards one of the letters and doesn't specify which. But he looks down at it as like an excuse about uh, a bastard's grasp and reach perhaps being different. So I'm afraid no further wagers for you, Sir Vannon. Uh, oh. But the rest of you are free to spend what coin is still yours to spend. But in better news, honeyed figs. Uh, and he claps. Oh his jeweled hands together and one of his people scurries up with a tray of some delectable sweet treats 
Uh, and you get the distinct impression that to him, the two things are about the same. Uh, one third of an ephemeral fortune that so far exists only on paper is about the same to him as an actual tray of delicious honeyed figs. Um, and he's just as upbeat and cheerful about it as he was when he won tremendous wagers, as he was when he lost to tremendous wagers. Illyrio Mopatis is an interesting fellow. I'm uh, watching Dan's face closely. I want to see how he's reacting to this. Oh, I'm fucking frozen. Of course, any coin of mine is, of course, the houses. I assume that. I kind of nod to Ilio uh, politely. But I look back at Dan and who's been told he can't bet anymore. What? Uh, yeah, you cut out a little bit there, Robert. Oh, oh, sorry. Uh, I look back at Dan, who has just been told he cannot bet anymore because he's a bastard, and uh, kind of, kind of concern on my face. I try to read his reactions and just watch what he does. If fire could freeze, <laughs> um, Illyrio gives uh, another kind of apologetic shrug while popping a honeyed fig into his mouth and then loudly slurping his fingertips clean. He goes, uh, of course, of course, your money is the house's money and, and not that. Just perhaps your grandfather sought to simply expedite such matters and immediately make the coin available for other business arrangements. I do not know. Uh, Illyrio, it is not your, you don't have to worry about trying to explain this. We know exactly what he was doing. But, honeyed figs. I take a fig. I take a fig. Uh, Dan, would you join me for a uh, bit of uh, our house wine? Seems there's not else for me to do. Thank you, my lord. As uh, we walk off, when we kind of shook our head, I'm not your lord, Dan. I'm your friend. We're practically brothers. Perhaps that's the case. Seems those who I would have called my brothers see me as grasping. You, um, did quite well for yourself in the betting. You know, after the ransom well. I had, but, uh, 100 gold dragons. What did you have? Not enough for what I'd hoped. There may not be enough gold dragons for what you hoped. Still, though, I suspect um, somebody doesn't want you making that name for yourself. Yes, well, a rivers once claimed the throne. No saying what a bastard can do in this world. I uh, put a hand on his shoulder and I pour us both some wine and uh, I don't have any other words for him because words are meaningless. All right. Uh, some horns blare. And the joust is ready to commence for the day. First up, trotting onto the field is Sir Vardis Egan captain of the household guard of the Eyrie in the Vale of Erin, uh, and the recent vanquisher of Sir Lucaris Nymerian. Uh, he and his destrier high step uh, onto the field, uh, draped in all their finery, uh, and his personal colors are quartered and complemented by the colors of House Erin uh, itself, uh, who he serves uh, with gallantry and honor. Uh, Rusty, but, when I had yeah. paid the ransom back to him to get my, my gear, it was off screen, but uh, I, I just wanted to note that I would have been very polite to him. I would have congratulated for him. It was a hell of a fight. Sure. What I have done had a long time, so there was a lot of uh, a knightly respect there. At least cool. 
Um, so uh, he high steps out. Yep, Kim. Similar note. Uh, I did likewise and offered a cask of Nymerian a uh, Nymerian wine. Though, if you want to role play out me and the red cider, cool. But only if we have time. Uh, we likely will not, uh, because cool. those who are both decent guys. Uh, that are not the grudge-bearing types. It wasn't going to turn into a tense standoff, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but they're also Handshakes, congratulations, the, yeah. damn good fight. Um, so yeah, duly noted uh, on your uh, out of character meta tracking of of people's reputations with you. Um, but yeah, we're not gonna. Yeah. Uh, so go ahead, Rob. Uh, um... Bannon, though you may they may not want you bet it anymore, would you mind managing my bets for me for a uh, percentage of them? Are you sure they'll be recognized thusly? Ah, you're but a bastard. Working on a lawful command from one of your betters, I believe. They should go along with... I'll see what I might do. And I'll give you access to 60 of my gold dragons and uh, keep 30% uh, of them before we win. As you wish. Uh, partially, it's just I don't have to bet. <laughs> so, uh, arriving opposite Sir Vardis Egan uh, is a man in a white cloak and enameled white and gold chased armor uh, atop a white destrier sits sir preston greenfield of the king's guard uh smart money is on sir preston though not by very much uh vardis egan is a uh knight of no small repute uh sir preston greenfield uh is among the more respectable uh and well-regarded knights of the King's Guard at present. Uh, there are a few King's Guard knights that are not held in such high esteem. Uh, he is very much kind of a uh, an iconic, reliable King's Guard knight. He's no Barristan Selmy. He is not a remarkable King's Guard knight, uh, but he is the sort of fellow that the Book of Swords is filled with. He is no Boros Blunt that, that shames the White Cloak either. Um, so, uh, you know, odds would be maybe 60-40 uh, Preston Greenfield type of vibe from your associated uh, knightly knowledge and tourney gossiping and watching them fight and that sort of thing. So not like a huge thing. So uh, let's get that Google Doc updated. Get bets in. Illyrio Mopatis, as always, uh, will cheerfully accept any wager uh, while also cheerfully eating about half the honeyed figs himself. Uh, anytime somebody grabs one, he has one. Because, oh, that, that sounds delightful. Uh, and and will <laughs> chomp on one. Um, he tends to punctuate most sentences, popping a honeyed fig into his mouth, uh, that sort of thing. So, uh, bets are in. The tourney commences. The white cloak charges across the field the first pass uh is a spectacular crashing of lances uh they shatter they splinter uh things go flying as things are wont to do uh in this sort of thing uh neither man gains a clear advantage <laughs> uh the second pass is much the same um, it's a, a solid match. Uh, they're both pegging with their shields just right, or their lances just right on the shields. Uh, solid shots. Uh, and the white cloak of Sir Preston Greenfield uh, flutters in counterpoint to the white and navy blue decorations of Sir Vardis Egan uh, with the, uh, the sun, moon, and star uh, on a navy blue field. So it's all very striking clashing colors uh white blue white navy go uh white gold uh they are the very model of gallant knights on the third pass uh vardis egan tumbles from the saddle his lance also shatters uh it's a good hit uh but sir preston stays in the saddle uh vardis egan draws his sword 
uh, and is swiftly joined afoot by Sir Preston Greenfield, a, a noted swordsman himself. Uh, there is an exchange of about four good back and forths. Uh, attacks, parries, counters, reposts, uh, back and forth and back and forth. Uh, and then a solid hit rings out uh, like the, the clamor of a bell. Those blessed bells in King's Landing that are used to announce triumphant news uh, and momentous occasions. Uh, and the Kingsguard Knight's helmet tumbles from his head uh, and clatters in the grass, followed a moment later by the white-armored and white-cloaked Knight of the Kingsguard, bleeding from a head wound. Uh, so Vardis Egan, the underdog, took it. Um, as happens sometimes, it was not a trouncing. Uh, it was a solid backsy forcey. Uh, both men are going to look good. Uh, Robert, for his part, does not throw his cup of wine uh, at Sir Preston the way he did against Sir Marin Trent, you may recall. Uh, there's no mocking and taunting and shaming of his household knight. Uh, or his sworn uh, bodyguard this time. Um, it's just King Robert roberting it up with good cheer at a, a fight well struck. He kind of ruefully turns uh, and swats John Aaron with like a backhand. Uh, you know, they're both sitting on their big fancy chairs up there. Uh, and it almost knocks John Aaron out of his seat. Uh, just, you know, Robert's like, ah, you got me. Uh, and it, it almost knocks John Aaron out, out, out of his chair, but he takes it in good humor. Uh, the winner was Vardis Egan. V-A-R-D-I-S Egan. E-G-E-N. Uh, so, uh, with an E instead of an A on the last one. Yeah. So, uh, Vardis Egan has made it to the top four. Overcoming some redoubtable foes, uh, and in a way, by making it to the top four, that does help Luke look a little bit better, right? You know, the better the better somebody does after you lose to him, um, the, the better you look, or the less bad you look, at least. So, oh, uh, right. Vardis Egan uh, uh, is getting on in years, but that does not seem to have slowed him down, and he took out uh, Preston Greenfield, the Kingsguard Knight in his prime. Speaking of knights in their prime... <laughs> Up next, uh, being led onto the field uh, by the uh, armored mountain that is your squire of young uh, Oris Waters, uh, comes the lady Bela Nymerian. Uh, Bela, you want to describe your bitchin' armor as you get led out? Yeah. Yeah, so I have some burgundine armor, which is like leather armor covered in plates and... Uh, has some like chainmail in there as well, and it's uh, a nice like um, base silver color with a lot of like red highlights in through it. With my personal um, symbol on my chest, and that's uh, two. There's a spear going up like the middle, and then two dragons curling around the spear, kind of looking like a caduceus. And uh, I have my standard. A helmet which is really freaking sweet because it has like a lady like figure and like in the front for the part that like folds down and the, the top is like a mane of uh, red feathers uh, so it kind of like clashes with the, the bright silver polished silver of the, the helmet and it also gives a kind of cool like wild Dornish look compared to some of the less flashy um you know, kind of more practical armor, because that's where good armor comes in. You know, it can look neater. Uh, so yes, uh, you in your red and silver stand in stark contrast to your opponent, uh, who is in green and gold. Uh, your opponent is also the second born of their house, and in some ways, their house's champion. Uh, your opponent also has a kind of dual uh, note on their personal sigil, their personal seal of arms, as often second-born uh, children do. Uh, his, however, 
<clears throat> is two golden roses on a green field because your opponent, uh, as Erica has known for a few weeks now, is the redoubtable Sir Garland Tyrell. Garland the Gallant. Um, he is overshadowed by his younger brother, Sir Loras Tyrell, the Knight of Flowers, uh, but not by much and not with the sword. Um, so it is a very tough matchup. Uh, Sir Garland is the smart money here uh, for uh, even the most loyal Nymerian uh, voters. Um, if it were a war to the death with Sir Garland leading a conventional army into the Red Mountains, smart money would probably be on Bela. Uh, but uh, you are fighting a Tyrell in his natural habitat, uh, which is a joust in front of a highborn crowd. So um, you, you've got so a uh, you've got a tough road ahead of you. I do. Uh, let's go ahead, uh, Luke. Sir Vaden. Yes. You're of course in charge of the bets, but uh, try not to develop your cock, okay? <laughs> it would feel inappropriate for me to bet in this particular circumstance. That's fair. I am a nod of approval. Uh, Adam, you could probably vote with your cock in this one and, and do okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, I feel like and a lot of people could. I, and that's how Ash died. <laughs> um... um I, I've, I've actually... I'm, I'm hedging my bets this time. Okay. I, uh, I, I've, I've got, no, that was very amusing, very funny. Uh, uh, I, I have careful oh. construction of it so that I either win, I either get back what I am, basically minimizing my loss depending on which, which way is, it goes. Which so is like half cock or? <laughs> <laughs> no. Rob, Robert. Just, just the tip. <laughs> Betting half cocked. I have to just step away for a moment because that was that was good. Uh, so, uh, wagers should be in on the Google Doc. Uh, Erica, uh, you are up for an actual Jousty McJousty pan. Yeah. So you so are going care. to have to uh, get yourself ready with your uh, passive ride, yada, yada, yada. Assemble your big fat die pool hmm. of animal handling as bonus dice. So you've got fight plus spears plus animal handling. Um, and then you're going to be keeping uh, fight minus one uh, for a charge. Mm -hmm. and, so uh, go ahead. And since I have a single wound minus an additional one. Yes. So you're going to be keeping fighting minus two. So two oh, dice. Yeah. Oh. Um, yeah. This is pretty so, rough. Uh, yes. Uh, keep in mind, destiny points are a thing. Right. Because you're still rolling a big fat handful of dice. You've got decent odds of, yeah. of dropping something solid. And maybe... Yeah. Uh, Just to remind everybody, if they are currently in lead of the Iron Throne, they get a destiny point to issue out to a player. Is that correct? Uh, yes, whoever has seized the Iron Throne oh. uh, most recently does have a destiny point. I'm going to drive it up, so if someone who's watching wants to spend a little bit and get it, uh, that should be doable. I'm uh, also writing those... high in the saddle, by the way. That's All right, my so stick with your high in the saddle. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Uh, what is your total on your hit roll? So I am going to use a destiny point here because two dice is probably not enough to knock off Sir Garland. And uh, my total comes to 21. Nice. The absolute uh, maximum yeah. I could do. Nice job. Yes. Uh, so that does get you uh, two degrees of success. So in a moment, he will need to make that roll to stay in the saddle. Uh, his armor is going to absorb the base damage. We've already figured that math. Um, yeah. Your armor is going to absorb his base damage also. Okay. But he had an 18 
uh, to hit. Um, so what is your passive ride? Kevin, I was trying to help you. 13. Sorry, uh, 13. <laughs> so it's going to be two successes against two successes. So you both need to make a formidable roll. So difficulty 12 to stay on your horse. If, um... And what's the roll for uh, one degree? I'm considering maybe dropping that down. Uh, sorry, dropping what down? Uh, using a destiny point to remove a die from his roll. Oh, okay. Um, yes, if you spend a destiny point, that would that would get a loss of a degree of success. And what is that total I would need? Uh, then you would need a nine to stay in the saddle. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. All right, so you brace against it in, in the last second, uh, and that will give you a, a uh, difficulty nine, uh, but you do have a, a penalty on this from high in the saddle, so it still could be tricky for you. Uh, Sir Garland uh, does not roll fantastically well, uh, but he does handily stay in the saddle. If I spend a destiny point to remove one of his die, will he fall out? He will. Nope. He would still stay in the saddle. This way. Oh, shit. Um. All right. Well, I'm going to use a destiny point then to add an extra die to my total. And that will okay. bring me up to... Exactly nine. Okay. Sir Garland will not spend a destiny point to make you fail. <laughs> okay. Sir Garland has access to destiny points, uh, but uh, as of right now, at least, he feels like he does not need that, or perhaps it would simply be ungallant uh, to uh, go that hard in his first Damn pass. It, Garland! So, both of you stay in the saddle on the first pass. Uh, and the crowd fucking loses their shit. Uh, because this is Sir Garland the Gallant, and this is a woman. Uh, and they're like, w what? Like, she did not get one-shotted by him. Uh, and that puts you a leg up over several of his other opponents already. So, we get ready for the next pass. Normally, you'd be able to do a take a... a Take a breather action to get a few health back. But, but you guys are both fine because you're yeah. wearing good enough armor. So let's get those die pools together. Uh, pick your stance. I have to do the same thing again. All right. All right. High on the saddle it is for one or two. Two. All right. Sir Garland does not roll fantastically well. Damn, that's a lot of twos. What the hell, Sir Garland? Woo! <laughs> Woo! All right. Uh, what is your total, Erica? Well, first I have to ask about the stream boss because it has been beaten twice so far um, without being assigned to the extra. Okay. Uh, it's, gone to, it's been assigned to me, but Ash yeah. also did oh. much earlier in the stream. Uh, so they, they both okay. go to Bela? All right. All right. No! I got a few no, extra. No! no. no. Oh, Garland! No. You're no. giving the distance to Garland? Okay. Ash. I've got 20 dragons riding on this guy. Ash. It's All right, I got to connect my damn card to this thing. You're a traitor, <laughs> but also high. <laughs> high. Yeah, but don't you think that uh, ransoming back his stuff is going to be worth more? So uh, uh, yeah. well, I, see I see what you're trying to armor do. with all its clothes and stuff gone or whatever. Final call. Did it go to Bela or Garland? Fucking Garland. Mine went right. to Bela. Let's make okay. this interesting. Okay. Win. So I have a 19 so. by using a destiny point to keep an extra die. All right. That will give him a difficulty 12 again. Uh, his total is once again an 18. Uh, he is not rolling super hot here. So I believe that's going to be two degrees against you, barring shenanigans. Uh, 
then there's like no way I can well not no way but this is gonna be difficult all right so looking for a 12 to stay in the saddle no uh, it's impossible both of you are looking for 12s it, I couldn't I, I was actually looking for a 14 keeping two dice yeah um so um that will do it on the second pass then uh both lances shatter uh, you're hitting him as well as he is hitting you. Uh, he just has a bit more mass, uh, a bit more practice, specifically at jousting, uh, and a few less bruised ribs uh, yeah. and that sort of thing. The, I swear, so, those wound that that's the big difference here. Wounds, really wounds is. are gonna do that. Uh, so you go tumbling from the saddle. Uh, that's nine points of damage that bypasses armor uh, as the wind is blasted from your lungs okay. because you get punched with the planet. I um, have to take an injury for that. Uh, and now it is your turn. Do you stand up and challenge him? So I'm going to quickly jump to my feet in an acrobatic fashion. Right. And then I'm going to bow to him and then turn to bow to the king. All right. Uh, all of King's Landing goes, huh? and I like you can hear this sharp <laughs> intake of breath uh, as as she uh, you know, springs to her feet. Uh, and then instead of calling for her spear, uh, graciously honors her opponent and the crown. Um, and again, the, the, the crowd goes wild. Um, there are roars. You hear balas and you hear garlands um, in the background. You know, uh, not quite a, a taste great, less filling back and forth call and response. <laughs> uh, but definitely the crowd is impressed with both of you. Um, King Robert lifts his, his, his cup. He goes, aha, well struck the both of you. Garlin, you've put the girl in good company. Some of the hell, she wouldn't lose as graciously. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, to. everybody's, everybody's flipping out. Um, it was a solid match. Woo! Everybody got to look good, and then there was still a nice, decisive end. So that's about as good as Justin gets for most of the small folk. Uh, you know, it's like, yeah, that was, that was good stuff. Nobody looked inept. Nobody looked like a bully. Uh, you know, just good stuff. Um, and with that, House Nymerian is no longer in the grown-up joust. I, I now feel uh, mildly bad about my decision. <laughs> I'm sorry. In, in fairness, it's... <laughs> I got swept up in the, the free song. <laughs> um, <laughs> and in your defense, Sir Garland didn't use a destiny point to do it. Oh, yeah. So, no. you were, you know, so it's not like he was like, yeah, I'm going to take that bitch's dice away. Like, no, I spent another destiny point. She keeps zero. Get wrecked. Like he didn't, <laughs> he didn't and to be fair to uh, to Adam, he probably doesn't think of his talk that often. So. <laughs> uh, this is so. Uh, the the bout ends. Uh, Bela's not in as bad a shape as she was about this time yesterday. <laughs> this was true. not a a hard fought tooth and nail bashing each other with rocks we find on the ground and drowning my opponent in a puddle of his own blood level of ferocity mm -hmm. that you guys were kind of fighting to in some recent bouts. So uh, the gallantry is on display. You're actually feeling pretty all right um, as you're, you're led off the field uh, and you're able to mingle with the family as the next pair of jousters uh, finish their preparations and get ready to be announced. So we'll give, give the scene to the group for a moment. I would dearly like to finish the last two jousts and then do a pee break, uh, just so we can wrap up the grown-up joust uh, for this pass, if that works for everyone. Mm -hmm. Like, sure. if you've got to go, you've got to go. But I thought it would be cool to wrap up this round. 
Uh, so, while House Nymerian is no longer in the joust, your cousin, Lord Will of House Will, uh, makes his way onto the field. Uh, he has a lean <laughs> courser uh, as his war horse. Uh, and opposite him is Sir Merlin Craighall. The Craighalls are big boned, burly, brawny Westerlander knights. Uh, Sir Will stands in stark contrast to that. He has a leaner, quicker horse, uh, and he is a lean, dark, dangerous fellow uh, in much lighter armor uh, than most of the tourney knights are wearing. Uh, and once again, you see the gleaming hilt on his hip, uh, the ruby gleaming in it um, uh, as your cousin prepares. Uh, this one's about even odds. Once again, if it was House Craycall trying to invade, uh, you know, House Will, smart money's on Will. Uh, but this is a, a contest of even combat, one-on-one, -on -one, starting on horseback. Smart money is actually on House Craycall uh, on this one. He is not a knight of particular repute, uh, but he did beat Sir Richard Horp last round, who is a knight of particular repute. Uh, and uh, Sir Merlin is just a bigger, burlier, brawnier guy. With the Westerlands, tends to have a bit more of a reputation for tourney fighting than House Will, which mostly has a reputation for slaughter and ambush. Uh, no, Rainer. So, same warning I gave Ben. <laughs> Don't vote with Venon's cock. Don't vote with Venon's <laughs> cock. Exactly. <laughs> Something like that. I think that's how it went. Whatever. Uh, so, uh, is the Google Doc updated and bets uh, in? He'll say that if he kind of gets into a joke. This, this is your Craig cousin, Hall. Lord Will, Will of Will, Craig versus Hall. Sir Merlin Craighall. Uh, smart money's on Craighall. Uh, again, kind of a. Uh, Two to one ish, um, so it's not like it's a super mega long shot, but smart money's on Cray Call. Doc updated it's, bets uh, in. It's too bad he's so closely related. A marriage alliance with you really would be the best option right now. Cousins aren't out of line. Not a line, uh, but uh, much of like a second daughter by, kind of thing. By by modern standards, yes, of course that's gross, uh, but. You know, from where you guys are from, it's not unheard of. Anyways, uh, our bet's in. Anybody not yes. got a bet in that is betting? All right, then. Uh, the horns blare. Uh, Robert bellows uh, as loud as the trumpet fanfare. Okay. Okay. So, the underdog won on the first pass. I've been handling these with single die rolls here. Um, as they both go in, Sir Craycall's lance also shatters. Both lances break. Uh, but the cheer of the crowd is cut short uh, as Cousin Will's lance shatters and the broken remnants of it slide upwards off Sir Merlin Craycall's shield uh, and into his visored face. Uh, oh my god. Oh, damn. So, uh, he stays in the saddle, so it takes everyone a moment uh, to go, yeah, oh, 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 oh no. Um, oh, no, 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 no. He it just stays got real. in the saddle uh, and uh, is, is able to, to reach up, and he opens his visor, uh, and a bloody shard of wood about oh. four inches long comes out. It was protruding through the visor. Like, it didn't go all the way in. Uh, but it does come out with some blood on it. Uh, and it it looks like it just barely missed his eye and kind of oh. went along the side of his face. So he's got a pretty good cut uh, that is, is bleeding down. Um, and uh, he, uh, he's got kind of a you know, broad face, broad shoulders, bushy beard. Uh, that is uh, Westerlin's yellow, and like half of it's turning reddish gold instead. Um, and then he beams out this broad grin 
uh, through his his beard, and he goes, ah, ah, Seven hells! That does it for my luck this day! And he throws his helmet onto the ground uh, and raises an empty hand uh, to your cousin Will, who had already prepared a new lance and was making ready for a second charge. Uh, and your cousin flashes a bright smile and dips his lance to accept his opponent's defeat. Um, well, way to go, Will. Yes. On that one, the dice came up a one and another one. So I'm like, hey, yes. let's remind everybody that critical fumbles and shit can happen sometimes. Um, well, on second thought, sister, if you want to bet it on uh, Will, I guess that'd be prudent. <laughs> Or just visit him more often. Uh, <laughs> Go up and see yeah. him sometime. Listen to Adam being smug about somebody else's romantic choices. Yeah, don't don't <laughs> let him get off easy. You really write him hard. Oh, I'm, I'm, look. <laughs> I'm, I'm just enjoying the saucy band. Look, Grim uh, takes a big old swig of wine. This brings us to the final match of this whole round of the Joust, as the final eight turn themselves into the final four. Uh, and a champion of House Fossaway makes his way to the field. Sir Tanton Fossaway, uh, who recently vanquished Sir Vannon Rivers in a very hard fought battle, uh, has gamely appeared, uh, though. He's sitting very stiffly in the saddle, uh, and as his squire uh, helps him with his helmet uh, there at the end, uh, you can actually see he does have two bandages uh, still wound around his head from a, a scalp wound. Um, and sitting opposite him is Bronze Jan Royce, who uh, didn't have many fucks to give about his joust against Sir Nathan Lugas, uh, and similarly does not seem daunted uh, by the appearance uh, of, of an apple opposite him now. Uh, this one's a really clear favorite on Bronze Yon Royce. Uh, the Fossaways are uh, Reach Knights of no small renown, uh, and this one has performed admirably in this tourney, um, but we're looking at a pretty heavy favorite for Bronze Yon. Uh, again, about the two-to-one type of action. Uh, from what you can garner, uh, because Bronze Yawn is also uh, from the Vale of Aaron, tourney knight of some renown, and he's just also a big bad dude that is really good at this. Uh, so, Smart Money looks to be on the unflappable Bronze Yawn Royce, who looms atop a massive destrier uh, in his plain bronze armor studded with runes. Um, and with his big shield, which is right. a bronze field with like black studs on it, uh, and the occasional runic uh, mark. The blood of the first man is very thick uh, in the, uh, the the veins of, of House Royce and certain other corners of the Vale. Um, you notice Oris again, uh, glaring with brooding intensity. Um, and kind of clutching the barrier leading to the jousters uh, with his face thick with mixed feelings. Big anybody bastard not, energy. <laughs> anybody not got a bet in that wants a bet? Three, two, one. The horns blare uh, and dashing warhorses rise to the occasion. In the first pass, both lances shatter, uh, and uh, Sir Tanton Fossaway reels in the saddle, uh, but is barely able to keep his feet in the stirrups. Uh, his shield actually falls from his arm, uh, as does his broken lance, as he kind of pinwheels with both arms, um, but then wrenches himself upright, uh, looking like someone trying to break a horse. Uh, more than much else. He just barely stays in the saddle. Uh, Bronze Yawn uh, leans forward into the moment of impact, uh, riding kind of high in the saddle 
and using just his mass and his weight to very aggressively hit his opponent. In the second pass, basically the same thing happens. Sir Tanton Fossaway hunkers down low uh, and is bracing for the impact uh, and leans into it just beforehand. Uh, and again, clean hits, both lances shatter impressively. Um, and Sir Tanton Fossaway again uh, is, is almost blasted from the saddle. This time he twists with it instead of his whole body leaning backwards. Uh, he he uh, twists against the impact uh, and is able to keep his shield and his broken lance. Uh, and Bronze Yawn again just kind of leans into the impact, uh, adding weight behind the, the strike of his lance. On the third pass, uh, as they are galloping towards each other uh, in those heartbeats of pounding hooves uh, and lances being couched and braced, Sir Tanton Fossaway rises in his saddle and is not even touching it. He just braces both feet in his stirrups and like stands uh, and angles his shield down and away. Uh, Bronze Jan Royce adjusts enough to still get a clean hit uh, and shatter his lance, but Bronze Jan Royce tumbles from the saddle on the third pass. Uh, Mother Fragger. Now, <laughs> Bronze Jan Royce is going to continue the matter afoot, yeah. uh, and I am going to start a second roll to see how that goes. Uh, but uh, we got a one on that, so the improbable happened as a tourney knight adjusted. All right. On foot, uh, the outcome is a bit more predictable. Uh, the gallant Reach Knight uh, goes for his sword against an honorable opponent that's also a lord, not just another sir. Uh, so he fights him in the classic honorable way, uh, bringing a long sword to a fight. <clears throat> Bronze Jan Royce fights with his faintly oversized mace, which is otherwise simply unremarkable. It is a straight shaft of wood, uh, polished and notched by enemy swords and helmets, probably, uh, with some extra weight on one end. Uh, and he just wades in, uh, and Fossaway has little idea how to fight that. He is not accustomed to fighting against wildlings and their cudgels. He's not accustomed to, to fighting against the brutal efficiency of the mountain tribes in the Vale of Aaron, and he is not accustomed to fighting against the sheer mass uh, and brutal force brought to bear by the blunt instrument of Bronze Yon Royce. Uh, so it takes him about four swings to damage Fossaway's shield, batter Fossaway's sword out of his hands, uh, and then hit him twice cleanly and just pound him to the ground. Um, and then he lifts his mace and waits, uh, and, and Sir Tanton casts aside his shield uh, and raises his empty hand in a clear gesture of defeat. So, uh, the underdog succeeded, and the crowd is is roaring, an apple, an apple, <laughs> a bronze nice to carve an apple, uh, and that's really. But Sir Tanton Fossaway is getting his credit uh, for, you know, some pretty impressive jousting there, um, and and over on the the other, you know, uh, kind of across the tourney viewing area, uh, you see his his uh, uh, brother-in-law. Uh, Sir Garland, uh, you know, cheering for Tanton and uh, and and leading a, a rousing uh, Reach uh, ballad uh, that several of the other gallant Reach knights and lords are joining in and lifting their glasses uh, to their opponent. Uh, Bronze Jan Royce um, lifts his visor and very stiffly and formally bows, uh, salutes his opponent, bows and salutes the king. Uh, and then just kind of trundles off um, without really noticing the crowd. They don't get uh, his, his you know, notice. Uh, but he's a very stiff and formal guy uh, that has managed to win. 
So uh, there will be a brief break uh, for light refreshments in game uh, as uh, tourney knights are able to go and, and work on their armor a bit uh, and they are prepping for the next round. We're going to transition to the squire's joust and then it'll be adult and then squire again. But everybody takes a break. First, uh, a new tray of, of figs comes out, a fresh round of wine, etc., etc. And we're going to take our 10-minute mid-episode break. So, viewers, we'll see you back here in a couple of minutes. Uh, chatter amongst yourselves, and we will return shortly. You better be here. All right, everybody, welcome back. All right, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, uh, thanks for sticking around during the break. Hope you grab some snacks. Uh, Lock the Decker had a cool question going in chat, which everybody should answer, as long as it's not going to distract them from role-playing uh, or from keeping up with the role-play, but what was everybody's favorite joust matches so far? So there's a lot of, hopefully, some, some fun to be had there. But uh, we have new matches on the horizon. And by on the horizon, I mean, holy shit, right now. Woo. Because we are up to the uh, fi semifinals of the Squires Joust. Uh, as the other knights are taking their time with their squires to batter a few dents out of their armor and choose what horses and figure out what weapons to bring to the next match, the continuation of the Squires Joust uh, is, is kind of a, uh, a mid-joust break that they're going to take here. So... Uh, opposite them uh on one end of the tourney field uh it comes a pair of kettle blacks uh the youngest kettle black brother osney uh has been led out to his to the field uh by various of his brothers throughout this time sorry um uh, it occurred to me i'm gonna need a few more dice uh, but uh, he is led this time by Sir Osmond, which is the knightly kettle black um, that uh, is armed and armored kind of unnecessarily so since he's not in the joust uh, any longer and has not been for quite some time, uh, thanks to a knight that we all know. Um, but they have kind of been filling in as sworn swords to the royal family uh, a few times, so it's also could just be head games trying to look cool uh, and a little bit more impressive, which isn't hard because they are big dudes uh, and, and swaggering up in armor, leading your similarly giant brother who is also in armor looks pretty cool. Opposite them here in the absolute semifinals, however, is an even bigger guy in even bigger armor that's actually fairly similar to their armor because it got bought out from under them because they tried to uh, renege on a purchase. Uh, and that is Young Oris Waters, squire to House Nymerian, who is serving as an honorary squire to Oris and leading him and his warhorse out to the field because we've been letting different players have fun with that different times. I did it last time. I'm willing to allow someone else to do it if they wish. I'll do it. All right. He All is right. led up by Sir Lucaris. Uh, his normal assortment of weapons uh, are arrayed on a small shelf, uh, hurriedly right. in between Wait, nightly rounds. Lead him out. Um, Horus does not. He hasn't quite gotten there yet. And the last match, he was warned about some castle folk etiquette to not remove his helmet and stuff. So he's just kind of sitting in the saddle, uh, like, oh, what if waving is rude? And, you know, just kind of worrying about the joust itself. Uh, but you are able to hype him up quite well. Yeah. Uh, Look, he's so just waving, pointing at him, smiling to women, waving <laughs> to the small. Uh, what do we got? People in the crowd. What do we got, Kevin? I take just one moment as he's on his way to the field to point out. These are honorless bastards. They will fight dirty. Do not let your guard down. Um, Great advice. Oris scoffs in a, in a way that makes it clear he was not planning to 
uh, in a uh, like like yeah, they're they're fucking kettle blacks. Then I give them uh, a friendly know. slap on the helmet, pump, and all right, go kick their asses. Um, and the small folk themselves uh, are getting increasingly invested in the squire's joust because they've been watching it for several days now, and the kettle blacks are not terribly well loved. Uh, by the people that know them best. Uh, they're no. just not terribly, yeah. So no. uh, people aren't ch- quite cheering Oris's name or anything, uh, but they're looking forward to this match. And, and you can hear quite a few murmurs. Uh, a lot of the highborn around the rest of the family over in the, the gambling area uh, with the, the other you know highborn folk, lots of highborn haven't been paying attention to the squire's joust. Like, if it's their little brother or nephew or something, then sure. Um, but the Squire's Joust has also been kind of inconveniently scheduled. Um, so now they're going, murmur, murmur, murmur. Look at the size of these two. Murmur, 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 murmur. murmur, murmur. Because both of these guys are well over six feet tall. Um, and, and you know, it's, it's a rather, they're bigger than many of the knights, uh, you know, that have been on display. Are. And they're like, like shit, what have we been missing out on? You know, it's. Uh, I, going I like to introduce Boris to the crowd as the Anvil of the Road. Okay. Um, the what? They roar. They roar like they know. Uh, like, like yeah. as though that has been his thing all along. Right. Yeah, I knew but, that. Oh no! Literally, like, I, I, your audio cut out in the middle of the second word, so I don't know the. The Anvil of the Road. He's a, he's oh, okay. a wandering uh, squire, and he's a <laughs> massively an anvil. I mean, oh. I mean, I was, I mean, I was just going to call him the hat. <laughs> you catch like some small folk. I've been betting on him here. for years. Absolutely, I know it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Following, following the minor league is the way to go. I've seen this guy before. Yeah. And I, uh, I very silly pull out like a gold dragon and I yell, two gold dragons on the anvil of the road. Um, small folk aren't going to take you up on it. They kind of gasp. Wow. Oh, a whole gold dragon. You know, uh, you know yeah. Yeah, but... that's a lot of money to them. Oh, boy. One so... gold farthing. Um, <laughs> sure. so... point, I'm just trying to, uh, just trying to yes. excite them and get them going. I'm not betting with them of course i don't have gold dragons yeah. they're also i i um so <laughs> who's our, with me our bets in on the document yeah mm-hmm. all right uh this, this one's gonna be bet on any person <laughs> right ever. i'm scared <laughs> <laughs> well oris can't hold you right now he's busy oh but if you like to bet your gold on him <laughs> All right, give me one second as I assemble a couple of honking big fat die pools. All right, we roll first as young uh, Osfred rush. Oh, shit, that's a lot of sixes, homie. Oh, okay. no. Uh, <laughs> I well, changed like that. He is. Um. He is he is dropping a six as one of his bonus dice. Like, just an unhealthy number of dice came up sixes. Of course uh, it did. It's all right. Or it'll be fine. Give me one second. I think uh, Ash oh, wants to give his destiny point to Oris from winning the Iron Throne. I think anybody can do. Like like yeah. um, these dice are just all of a sudden coming up very hot. Uh, they both are dropping sixes as bonus dice. Ooh, right, they uh, just went, hey, how many dice do we keep? Yeah, that many fucking sixes. Let's do this. Uh, so, with a 24 against a 24, uh, lances shatter into a bajillion fucking pieces. Uh, these are two very big dudes uh, that are good on horseback, uh, and neither one of them is uh, worried about the impact, it seems, uh, because they've both won so far um, just with good, accurate, hard hits 
in a I bet you can't take this sort of way. And so uh, the both of them uh, go in at, at aggressive, uh, very focused on a hard hit. And sure enough, both hits are very hard. Um, so that is uh, three degrees of success. So Kettle Black needs that to stay in the saddle. All right. And Oris. Okay. Uh, they both stay in the saddle. Uh, They're both rocked back uh, just by the impact of the collision. Uh, but both men just have a ton of mass on their side uh, and time in the saddle. Uh, and they roar or roll neatly past one another uh, and line up for a second pass. Oh. Right. Slipping a little bit. Uh, he actually had to, had to keep a five that time, like a peasant. Um, oh, shit. And so did Oris. So they both went from 24s to 23s. Uh, they are just landing palpable, solid-ass hits uh, as they race full-on at one another. Uh, with nary a concern to defense. And on the second pass, uh, Kettle Black falls from his saddle. Uh, he oh, hangs in there with like one foot in the in the uh, uh, the stirrup for a while, but he isn't quite able to make it like all the way to the end of the row uh, as he falls. Uh, Oris, um for his part, it is rocked back in the saddle, um, but doesn't even lose a stirrup. He stays his multiple points of contact uh, and and is good to go. The young Kettle Black wastes no time in launching himself to his feet uh, and looming his nigh six and a half feet tall. Uh, Osney Kettle Black stands uh, and holds a, a huge gauntleted hand out over his shoulder uh, as he backs towards his brother, uh, and his brother puts a wicked morning star uh, in his hand. A huge, broad mace uh, with with nasty spikes jutting from it. Uh, it is not an elegant weapon. It is not a pretty weapon. This one is not designed to look like an apple or anything. It is designed to look <laughs> no cute. Like, a, <laughs> like a club that you murder people with. Um, Oris uh, dismounts neatly and leaves his, his horse uh, trotting on idle a few steps past you, Sir Lucaris, uh, and he just holds a hand out to you. Which weapon do you give him? Because sometimes uh, PCs make decisions for NPCs. <laughs> what does he have available? Uh, he has his hammer, he has his uh, matic axe, uh, and he has his boar spear. Uh, the hammer is a hair less damage than the other two, but has the shattering special quality. Uh, the, other the, two are, the other two are functionally identical uh, as the math falls down. Uh, yeah, and to quote the chat, the big fuck off hammer. All right, yeah. then. <laughs> chat, chat likes that hammer. Big uh, fuck off show funny. anyone's. Uh, he once again holds on to his shield. Uh, in the Oris. past, he had not, uh, but he still has his, his dented shield on. And he goes, he pauses for a second and casts just a bit of a glance towards you. Do you know how you avoid the morning star? Hit him. Wake up late. I go kick his ass. <laughs> so we get some, some dad humor to, <laughs> to start the fight. Uh, so, um, Oris wades in. Uh, he chokes up on the hammer a bit. Um, it's a two-handed weapon. Like, you've seen him using it around camp. It's a tool as much as a weapon. That's why he has it. Um, like, but he's using it in one hand again uh, and keeping the, the shield handy. Uh, the both of them do a little, like, thunk, thunk of uh, 
brute bludgeon against their shield. Uh, and then they wade in with Oris taking the initiative. Um, that is a solid hit. Um, combat defense is that. Smash em. Okay. Um, and also, Kettle Black starts with a lot of points of damage. Um, so, one, six, seven. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, uh, because the initial fall off the horse is unsoakable. Uh, so, Osni Kettle Black is starting this fight with a 12 point hit to worry about. Um, because charges are things. So, uh, then the first hit with the hammer. Do that. He's got that armor rating damage. All right. Uh, so, uh, the first opening swing uh, is actually a feint. Uh, as once again, Oris shows he's not just uh, got brute strength. He actually twirls the hammer overhand uh, to get uh, Kettle Black to lift his shield. Uh, and then Oris wades in and uses his own shield arm to kind of hold the shield at an awkward angle, uh, pinning edge of shield to edge of shield. And then he just starts hammering at the shield and the arm it is strapped to, uh, circling and getting in a few nasty hits. Um, and the shield is damaged. Um, and Kettle Black takes a few seconds to wrench his arm free and to lash out uh, with his wicked morning star. Uh, 6, 12, 16, 19 uh, is a pretty solid hit. Uh, he has a combat fence of that. Uh, so, two degrees of success. Uh, all right. Uh, Oris is able to catch the return Morning Star swings on his shield. Uh, the spikes do dig into the shield uh, and scar it up. Uh, but Oris's shield is certainly in much better shape than Kettle Black's. Oris wades in again. Uh, and Kettle Black's shield is riven to splinters and a few uh, idle leather straps. Uh, and Kettle Black takes that much damage. Uh, okay. Uh, so Kettle Black is not doing super hot. He is gonna fight aggressively to try and do something. That is not a great roll. Uh, Kettle Black takes up the Morning Star in both hands after his shield falls to pieces off his arm. Uh, and Kettle he Oris. lunges in. Uh, but that extra die for attacking aggressively got him a two. Uh, so that is not a great roll. Six, Worth 12, it. 12 plus 7 is a 19. That is. Uh, and you get plus one damage for using it in two hands. Uh, so some hit points get through, but Oris is all right with that. Um, Oris is not going to take an injury just for funsies, uh, as he has done in the past, uh, because uh, he is up next. There's that. Reroll that. Um, and that is 16 points of damage. That's going to be another injury. Uh, no, shit. Aggressive attack. Sorry, keeping track of two fighters at once is twice as bad. Because uh, he's down to combat defense two, uh, which makes that a much more palpable goddamn hit. It's a three degrees of success. That's 24 points of damage. Uh, that is an injury. Uh, so Kettle Black will stop fighting on his action. So, uh, it is a quick flurry of attacking shields to seek an advantage uh and oris just does so a little harder uh than osney kettle black perhaps with a bit more rage pent up inside him 
uh, perhaps with a bit more to prove to newfound people he cares about watching, perhaps just trying to fight hard while he can because he feels like he's not going to be allowed to fight very soon. Uh, but something inside Oris lends tremendous fury and weight and accuracy to his blows. Uh, so the shield gets shattered. Uh, he is able to carefully, mostly avoid Kettle Black's return strikes uh, with some alarming speed uh, and, and usage of his armor uh, and its size. Um, and then he just lays a solid hammer hit uh, basically just like dead center in the middle of Osni Kettleblack's chest. Um, and it knocks him on his ass. Just like back a few feet and falling square on his ass in the dirt. Um, and there's a visible dent in the front of his armor uh, from just this kind of you know, solid kind of overhand punch, but also there's a Warhammer in it uh, that just connects just right. Uh, and Kettle Black is left gulping for air like a fish out of water. Um, uh, he claws his helmet off uh, and you can see him, uh, 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 you know, trying to catch his breath. Uh, and he's fumbling at, at his armor <laughs> to get this caved in breastplate uh, off of him and in the middle of all that he's waving like yield uh, yield uh, yield uh, yeah and, and just like trying to get the wind <laughs> back in him um, uh, as he yeah. yields I'm going to rush forward to try to help him with his armor uh, it is much appreciated because he is wearing gauntlets uh, and he has taken uh, two injuries and uh or sorry, two wounds and an injury uh, since taking the 12 unblockable damage. So he's in pretty rough Ow. shape and his <laughs> thick gauntlets on uh, and uh, is Luke, trying to save himself for the melee anyway. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, Lu uh, Luke gives Oris a look like, like well done, but then he's going to try to make sure this pork he doesn't die. Good thing he's uh, a big, yeah. strong man. <laughs> so uh, Oris is the victor. Um, Oris turns and uh, he, he, he kind of chokes up on the hammer so he's got it by like just the hammer head uh, and he lifts it to salute his opponent um, stops for a second uh, and his visor turns towards Vanin just like out the edge of his visor and he turns uh, and salutes very graciously uh, Sir Osney Kettleblack on the sideline uh, with a bit of a flourish uh, and then he turns uh, and and salutes the crown, all while keeping his helmet on. Um, so it's a little bit of over polite shade towards House Kettle Black on behalf of his fellow bastard. Um, uh, the king is out of his seat, and uh, like you know, like air guitar is a thing. Robert's like air hammer. Air loot. He's he's like air hammering up there, like like a past his prime baseball player like showing a swing uh, and he's up out of his seat uh, talking excitedly to John Aaron uh, and Sir Barristan Selmy, his Kingsguard knight up there at the Royal Box um, and he's like hammering somebody after they're down uh, and you can tell he's fallen back on a war story about when someone didn't yield fast enough type of thing and he's showing this like chopping motion and uh, you know, does a hand across his throat, type, of, ah, you know, uh, that sort oh, of thing. Ah, not, not paying that. tremendous attention to the squire joust now that it's over, and talking instead about himself. Uh, that's what he does. Thus endeth uh, that round of the squire's joust. Hooray! Mm. Which brings us back to the grown-up joke. Yeah, as soon as Kettleblack is dying, I will pass. aid Oris back yeah, to the he's... Uh, He will, uh, with that breastplate off, he's able to catch his breath again. Um, 
It was a combination of getting the wind knocked out of him and then suddenly his armor shrinking uh, <laughs> in a very unhealthy way and keeping him from catching it. But yeah, he's, he's fine. Uh, his brother kind of shoulders you aside, not quite like making contact, but clearly getting between you and his brother type of thing. Uh, and he helps his brother to his feet, kind of cursing him as he does so. Can't beat a bastard. Bad enough I lost to a bastard. Now you lose to a bastard? Damn it! Uh, and, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, as he's Damn those bastards. Helping his brother uh, off the field. Uh, and he's like, Father, I'll have our heads. Grumble, grumble, grumble. Ah, you're not dying, are you? Like the fourth or fifth thing he says is like, by the way, are your ribs in your lungs, right? <laughs> like it takes him several steps before he gets to to that level. But eventually he's helping his brother out the field and, uh, you know, Oris uh, makes his way off the field with you uh, and uh, all is, is well in the squire's joust. Uh, and then uh, coming up alongside you as you leave your end of the tourney field, uh, Sir Garland tosses you a sunny salute and a smile with his visor up. I'm afraid I missed it, but I feel it's safe to say well struck is in order. Uh, he tosses down cheerfully uh, as he is approaching the tourney field as you're passing. and uh, Oris gives him a, a nod, his helmet bobs, um, and he's probably grinning under there because he has his visor on, or his helmet on and nobody can see him be happy. Um, but yeah, so Garland Tyrell is gallant and cheerful to the lot of you. Uh, and he tosses you a jaunty salute, Sir Lucaris. He's like, wish well me done, Sir Garland. Uh, and he says, you have it? He, and uh, you gave my sister quite the run. It was a very exciting match to watch. Uh, we'll get you next time, though. But I'm certain you shall. If Sir Vardis leaves any of me to be gotten. <laughs> see well, shortly. We'll see. And he, <laughs> he goes through the motions of being intimidated by his opponent, but is clearly not. So the green and golden spectacle uh, that is Sir Garland the Darlin uh, it makes his way to his end of the, the, the field. Opposite him comes Sir Vardis Egan, uh, a man probably 20 years his senior uh, with salt and pepper stubble uh, and salt and pepper hair uh, and just a grim, serious countenance uh, of... You know, this is a part of my duty. I add to the glory of my house. Yada, yada, yada. Is a very serious kind of vibe compared to the kind of flippant confidence uh, of Sir Garland. I'm assuming that bets are in on the Google Doc. Uh, the favorite is, of course, Sir Garland of House Tyrell, uh, especially because you guys know he has at least one extra destiny point. Uh, to use uh, should a need arise. Um, he tosses a series of, of polite salutes um, with his, uh, like the, the, the cross guard of his sword is, is gilded and the pommel of his sword is a, a blooming rose. Uh, and he's saluting kind of can everybody. Uh, he salutes the king. He salutes the gaggle of noble women giggling nearby. He salutes the lot of you uh, making eye contact with Lady Reyna, the senior member of your house. He turns and he tosses salutes to the small folk. He salutes his opponent. Uh, he is gracious with his good grace. Um, and uh, yeah, and like four women just got pregnant from that. Uh, but he's <laughs> really men. just he's just polite to everybody in good cheer. Um, and, and growing strong all the motions uh, Vardis Egan for his part turns and salutes the king and then salutes his lord John Aaron uh, the hand of the king and the man to whom Vardis Egan is sworn well, well, before I leave the field as I see Egan come sure. up to the field I will give him a nod as well but a salute. as he was a man who bested me yeah uh, he does not seem to notice uh, he's oh. looking pretty focused on Garland um, uh, so yeah, it, it doesn't sure. seem like him to purposefully snub it, but he is a very focused guy. Uh, well, he needs to be. So, so, uh, bets are in, I'm assuming. 
uh, and the Horns Blair and Destrier's Destry. Uh, all right. Uh, the first three passes are almost like textbook perfection again, uh, as each knight uh, braces for the impact just so, leans into the impact just so, touches their opponent's shield just so, letting the horse do the work, uh, letting the speed do the work, and the lance bring the power. Uh, they're all about accuracy and resisting their opponent's strike, uh, and it could almost be... Um, uh, Kevin, you shared a, the video from some uh, European martial arts guys the other day where it was doing like sword fight into pausing for just a second uh, and showing a shot from a manuscript where they're doing so the sword cool. fighting technique. Like yeah. each pass could almost be that. Like they're doing a, a clinic on how to joust uh, with aplomb, grace, and technique. Then the in the shot. fourth, yeah, uh, in the fourth pass, uh, Sir Vardis struggles to stay in the saddle. In the fifth pass, Sir Garland Tyrell uh, reels in the saddle and actually loses the the haft of his lance. But uh, as he straightens and casts a look over his shoulder, Sir Vardis Egan is on the ground. Uh, yes. So they were solid hits all around. Uh, but on the fifth pass uh, of the tourney, with both of them having shattered their lances in each pass, uh, Vardis Egan uh, is down. Uh, Sir Vardis clambers to his feet. He does not lunge or leap or kip up or twirl or spin or break dance, uh, but gets himself <laughs> to his We feet. love your break dancing, Bail. Um, it is... Uh, it is a steady kind of process of getting one leg under him, getting his hand on that knee, and then pushing himself up. And then he pants for a few moments, and then his shoulders kind of slump, uh, and, and he just tosses his shield to the ground uh, and, and lifts the visor on his helmet. He's like, I'd call for a sword, but... I know how it'll end, and both of us need to save ourselves for the glory of the melee, I think. Uh, I'll see you on the morrow, Sir Garland. Um, and he says it kind of resignedly, but not quite resentfully, right? He's not, uh, you know, super mega bitter about it. It's just a dude that's like, I've got a chance, but uh, it's not a great chance. And that fall kind of sucked. And I'm 20 years older than him. And I'm also signed up for this shit tomorrow. And just, all right, I went five lances. It's okay. So he doesn't seem angry or whatever. Uh, Sir Garland salutes him uh, without irony. Uh, he says, five lances, sir, and all of them well struck. I, I look forward to our match on the morrow. Um, and then Sir Garland goes back to cheerfully... Uh, waving to the crowd he salutes only the king this time and then it's open-handed uh beauty pageant waves uh to basically everyone so <laughs> mixed that flowers is... appear tuxedo mask style my work here is done that is one Solid. finalist locked in um the remaining finalists, we're actually going to have, go ahead and have them finish their round. Uh, is her cousin, the Will of Will, uh, who high steps his lean and swift courser uh, onto the field um, to some small folk acclaim. Uh, Kingslanders and, and other uh, uh, Stormlanders and folks from the, the uh, kind of royal territory around here aren't terribly fond of the Dornish. And anyone that's not terribly fond of the Dornish isn't terribly fond of House Will. But he has a few admirers in the crowd Ooh. and they're just excited to see another match. Um, so he acts like the crowd loves him. 
Um, he draws his sword, makes a big show of saluting the king, uh, and then turning with his Valyrian steel weapon, kind of levels it to call his shot, and then salutes his opponent uh, and sheaves it. Uh, because ambling into view opposite him is Bronze Yon Royce on his monstrous destrier. Of course. Uh, final four don't play around. So uh, nothing's left but really dangerous dudes. Uh, in this one, the strong favorite is Bronze Yon Royce. Um, once again, were it battle to the knife, the will of will uh, would kill Bronze Yon's sons and kill Bronze Yon last by poison and deceit and whatever. But it's a <laughs> turn. Uh, and he is a wiry, lean, dangerous fighter uh, against a really big dude in really heavy armor. Perhaps the most famous armor in Westeros, actually. Uh, you know, this rune-encrusted bronze uh, of of the lords of runestone. Um smart money is is on bronze yon royce um so uh as always illyrio mopatis will cheerfully take bets uh he's like oh a dangerous man indeed your cousin and he'll cheerfully bet on will uh against you guys or you know vice versa as is his want uh he passes uh either way back and forth um so our bets in on the google doc yeah, it's a hard call, right. but it's done. So just remember, uh, you, you know, re have... recap for me just who's who we've got. Uh, who, this like, is who's, your cousin. Who's... It's the will of will against Bronze Yon Royce. Okay, I was going to ask, and who's the favorite? But we know. <laughs> yeah, Bronze Yon. <laughs> um, yep. Uh, and remember, you don't have to bet. Like, if you feel bad for betting against family or whatever, you're not obliged to bet but uh wagers are in uh the crowd intakes uh, uh a breath uh and they charge okay um on the first pass both lances shatter uh they're solid and accurate hits but uh bronze yawns doesn't quite shatter in the same way it kind of holds steady for like a tenth of a second um because the will of will is just hung on the end of the lance oh. uh, for a tick uh before it breaks his horse keeps riding the will of will does not uh he just doesn't have the bulk and the heavy armor and and the uh kind of I don't want to say the, the the gravitas in the saddle i think gets the point across uh that's just not the way he rides and in fact bela you for sure recognize he was high in the saddle trying to score a good hit uh he was like offense is the only way it's probably gonna work yeah um so he unreasoning went, aggression uh, for the win he went <laughs> for it uh, but he just got blasted from the saddle by bronze john royce uh, and he is on the ground. Um, he rolls over to hands and knees for a few moments, and you can see him kind of arching his back and gulping for air. Uh, and then he, he lurches to his feet. Uh, he's down almost as long as you can be down and still say that you're clambering to your feet quickly enough, right? It's like as long as you can be down there to gather yourself, uh, and then up he comes, uh, and Scorpion leaps into his hand, and that reddish glint of Valyrian steel, um, and he ponders it for a moment, uh, and then he reverses the blade uh, and kind of dips it into the, the soil and half bows over it. And he says, ah, perhaps Valyrian against bronze will wait for the melee. Well struck, Lord Royce. Well struck. Um, which is about as begrudging a good cheer as you can picture from him. Um, but yeah, he got hammered pretty good too. Uh, because tourney lances have powerful. So they add damage, uh, and that damage ignores armor. 
uh, and he is also endurance three, like many of you, and that it's is a palpable much. hit. Yeah, uh, it was a is a hard hit. Uh, so he decides that discretion is the better part of Dornish valor, uh, and will will wait. So that does it for the adult joust. Uh, few days. Sister, Lana. Because just as a reminder of the schedule, tomorrow in game is the melee. The day after that will be the finals, uh, the championship and high point of the tourney, depending on who you ask. As Sir Garland Tyrell crosses lances with Bronzion Royce. So the list is down to two. And now take it away, Luke. Go ahead. Up, oh, uh, sister, uh, now Raina, you should go check on Will. See if he's up. A... Uh huh. Uh, he is not heading to the Maester's tents or anything like that. He takes the reins of his horse back from some Kingslander boy that he tossed a few coppers to, to squire for him. Um, uh, and he actually just hops back up on his horse. Uh, he does toss you lot a small wave, uh, and then he tosses his head and turns and trots away to brood or plot, uh, perhaps in in secret. Uh, it was but a suggestion. Uh, he looks fine. <laughs> He'll come find us. We got the Very wine. Well. I want to hear the story of how I got his sword back. Uh, so, uh, next up is a bit of intrigue. Who is going to squire for Oris this bout? Because you and Oris are away finalizing preparations again. Adam, Who, what? Adam. I'm going to recommend Adam. 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 Like, literally seeing his eyes light up, just be like, <laughs> I think right. Adam should do this. So, Adam will be off uh, helping... Sec, uh, you know, double check uh, the buckles on Oris's armor uh, and, and that sort of thing. We might cut to that scene in a moment. So, Adam, decide what, if anything, you want to say in your private moment in a locker room tent. Um, <laughs> to the rest of you, uh, back where you sit, uh, Illyrio Mopatis makes a big show of, of lifting his glass uh, and toasting a recent arrival that approaches the lot of you uh, in your small group. Uh, and it is Robar Royce, the second son of Bronze John Royce, uh, whose arm is still in a, a sling um, and it's it's still bandaged up. The bandages look cleaner though. It looks like it stopped bleeding right through them uh, all the time, but he's still uh, got that arm protected and, and slung. Um, but he approaches the lot of you uh, with a smile that looks a little regretful. Uh oh. Well, uh, he's a sir, right? Yes, he's a sir. Okay. Sir Verbar, it's a pleasure to see you. Uh, and you, of course, Lady Reyna, Lady Bela, and sirs. He nods to both knights at once. And, uh, of course, the, the magister. Uh, I, I wonder, uh, is it Lord Mopatis, uh, Sir Mopatis, uh, simply Sir, I hope will do, if we might have uh, a moment alone with House Nymerian. And he goes, ah, of course, no need for a foreigner to listen in on the private dealings of highborn Westerosi folk. I'm off to find something to snack on. I haven't eaten since lunch. Uh, and oh my god! He's been cheerfully, like they're yeah, yeah. He cheerfully ambles away. Um, so, uh, Sir Robar almost winces now that you guys are alone, and he tosses a glance over towards his shoulder and says, "I, I I'm afraid I come under uh, unpleasant circumstances." Um, and I feel that it would be best if my brother did not hear of it. Uh, I hope I have your discretion. 
He's talking mostly to Lady Reyna as heir slash nominally head of the house at the moment. Yeah, I look to her for her, you know, reply. Well, I've, I would love to honor this, um, and I will. I thank you. We find ourselves at a bit of a crossroads, and it seems to me that perhaps your lad, uh, Oris, my <laughs> my cousin, uh, could could profit every bit as much as House Royce. Uh, as you may have noticed, my arm is still less than well. Uh, and as such, I, I will be unable uh, to partake in the melee. And he sounds genuinely and openly disappointed, which absolutely makes sense for any knight, but especially a second son. Uh, he says, and so my younger brother, uh, Waymar, uh, wishes to join us. Um, he has pledged himself to the Night's Watch soon. Um, this tourney is something of his last hurrah before he rides north to take the Black. He desperately wishes to be knighted by father, uh, perhaps King Robert. Uh, but regardless, he wants his spurs before he, he takes the Black and, and serves on the wall. If he does not distinguish himself uh, in the Squire's Joust by winning it, he hopes to distinguish himself in the melee, filling in for me uh, as this broken wing, alas, leaves me unable to fly. But, uh, and he kind of leans in, you likely know it is Waymar that Oris is up against in the championship of the Squire's Joust. If, if Oris might see fit to lose to Waymar, Waymar could likely be knighted by father for his triumph in the squire's joust, and then we would have an opening in our team in the melee, and perhaps our cousin might join us there. This would be an opportunity for Oris to impress the family, uh, and he would be paid fairly from any ransoms gained or prize that we won. If, if he could bring himself to lose to, to Waymar uh, and to see to it that my brother earned his spurs today instead of needing to earn them tomorrow. Uh, and again, several of you have pretty high awareness roles and a few of you have empathy. Uh, and this is a freebie because he is really fucking bad at deceit. I, I this take is that. not I a don't... lie. This is not a... Like, like, he seems very earnest with everything that he is saying. And you're all pretty confident uh, in that. I take it um, I'm not here to be able to do that. Right. Uh, you are off with Oris. Uh, you're like, no, your your butt armor isn't on. It's tighter. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you're you're off doing that with Oris right now. Butt armor uh, is will... yeah. Fetch Maybe the butt I'm cheek right stretcher. Let me check um, real quick. So, uh, that is his proposal to you as acting uh, head of the house and the vibe that all of you get uh, is that A, he is sincere, it's not deception of any sort and also you all know that it's it's a, I won't say it is a reasonable request, it is an accurate request, like it's it makes sense um, that they would A, want Waymar to uh, distinguish himself uh, and B, Either of these would be fine ways to do it, yada, yada, yada. So you don't think it's a trap or a trick or anything of that nature, but it is a uh, an interesting proposition. Push to talk. Isn't Oris a cousin to his, this family via his mother? Yes. Uh, his mother is Bronzion Royce's eldest sister, uh, and when she would not abort him, uh, they banished her to be a silent sister shortly after Oris's birth. When you say they, was it Bronzion or was it his father? Bronzion Royce was the head of house at the time. Sir Robar, you have been nothing but honorable in your dealings with us. 
and I appreciate that very much. I will ask Oris and present it to him, and we will find out his answer on the field of the Squire's Joust shortly. Of, of course. Uh, no lord or lady can compel uh, a man to, to fall uh, on the field of honor. Uh, the request alone would be appreciated, offering him the choice. Uh, we can we can leave it to him, of, of course, of course. Uh, again, please don't let Raymar know that I've asked, or, or my father. I simply would would not see my brother uh, sent north without some honor. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, I, I, congratulations again to the lot of you for your successes in the tourney. Uh, alas, and he kind of wryly holds up his injured arm. Uh, each of you far surpassed me in the rankings, and all well struck and, and well deserved. Uh, I am sorry to only approach you again under such circumstances. Uh, I, I thank you. Thank you for your time. Your uh, goal is noble, at least. I'll give him a nod. So, yeah, uh, again, from what you've ever heard about him or from him, it sounds like just a big brother trying to look out for his little brother who's about to take the black. Um, so with that, we will cut to Adam and Oris, double checking Oris's armor uh, and, and that sort of thing. And whenever you want to, Reyna, you can step in. What if I just don't? Well, you did tell Robar that you would ask him. He doesn't that need to know she didn't. Fine. Okay. You could show up and so, not mention it. You yeah, could I'm just hover saying, at the like, doorway waiting for the moment. Yeah. I was um, just going to be like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck him. Uh, so, uh, Oris is steady there. He's checking what armor he can. Again, he moves very easily in the armor. He seems very expert at, at putting it on. He has likely buckled more armor buckles than you have. Uh, because it's a day in, day out thing for Hedge Knight, yada, yada, yada. Um, so, uh, you're alone with Oris in a, a small tent. Ah. And, and Oris, as you may have noticed, is not likely to initiate the conversation. So the ball is in your court. Um, mm. How are you feeling about this, Oris? Uh, he grunts instead of shrugs because he doesn't want to move too much while the armor's being adjusted. He goes, I'll win. Of course you will. We All of us believe completely in you. You've got this. It's, uh, it's a Royce, though. So I'm not what sure I'll it? stop when I win. You you need to, Oris. Like I I know that you're angry about the things you've learned, but the person you're facing, it's nothing to do with him person. And the last <sighs> thing you the last thing you want to do is get caught, you know, acting dishonorably in front of the king. It wouldn't go well for you. It might feel good in the moment, but it wouldn't be worth it. Uh, he lets out that gusty sigh. He's like, fine. I don't. I don't want to shame your house anyway. I just. It's. It, it's. It's not. I just want to okay. hit him. <laughs> I. I know. I, I'm. I know. I might not seem like it, but I do understand feeling of wanting to really hit someone but it's not about shaming the house it's well I suppose that's only a little bit of it you wouldn't be able to be with the house anymore and I don't we don't want that I don't want that he <laughs> uh I was going to say, the, the I don't want that flies over his head, 
Uh, but it's, he just kind of misses the obvious connotations there. And he goes, well, that's up to Wooly Will anyway, and he's already going to be cross with me. Look, don't worry about him, okay? Even, I don't think he necessarily will be cross with you. And even if he is, we can talk him down from it. He, uh, and his helmet's not on yet. Uh, but he actually gives you a little bit of a smile. He just goes, I don't think you've seen Willie Will Cross. This week, I've done everything but sire a bastard that he's ever told me not to do. <laughs> Wy- Wyvern's well, rest might fall with his yelling when we get back there. Well, neither of you have seen how persuasive I can be. So uh, just just he, trust me, okay? He lets out a Look, half-hearted just, chuckle. I'm just and he's like, gonna... "Oh, you're you're gonna protect me." Oh, is just... that so? Is that is that so funny? Just do a tap, tap, tap at the, yeah. at the wood next to the. He town. reaches up and tousles your hair, and he's like, "Well, I couldn't ask for a better one, I suppose." Oh. And oh. then comes the tap, tap, tap on the. Uh, the, you know, yeah, kind yeah, of on the come, tentacle. Come in. Come in. Right, well, hang on. Yeah, yeah I guess he, I'll go and, put, go and yeah. poke my head out. It's, yeah, it's it's just a, you know, it's it's not like super locked yeah. or anything. You can just mm. come on in. Mm. Oh, hi, Raina. Hello. I need to speak with Oris. Eh? You may well, speak. It's not a is... secret between us. Oh, right. Well, I'm just going to carry on with these buckles. Sounds wonderful. He uh, he grabs his helmet and kind of lifts it up. He goes, not to worry, my lady. I'll... Well, I was putting it on in a second. Just continue with what you're doing, and I will present the situation to you, and you may think about it while you continue being girded. Um, we've been approached by Robar Royce huh. and he proposes a bargain with you huh. in which you would fall to Waymar what? To allow him to receive his spurs before he leaves to go to the wall for his lifetime of service to the king's to the Night's Watch. In return, uh, you would participate in the melee as part of the Royce's team. Uh, you notice his gauntleted hands are curved into fists, uh, and you're not sure if he notices it or not. Um, and he just kind of stands there like a statue for a few seconds. And he goes, They're out to poach me from your melee team in exchange for me losing. My, my reward for letting him win today would be helping them win tomorrow. Yeah, fuck that. No way, Raina. No fucking way. <laughs> and... I... <laughs> Sorry, just... so At fine. its most basic, yes. I believe Sir Robar believes that he is producing a situation in which you would gain good, better standing within that portion of your blood family. Oh, so so my mom can open her mouth and speak a word to another human again? No? No. That wasn't mentioned? No. Can't take back those sorts of oaths. Can't give her back 17, 18 years taken. You can't. No. And, and what did they offer you? What's House Nymerian gained from this? Other than losing your squire mid-joust and having no one to back you in the melee. That would pretty much be it. <laughs> yeah, no way. I, mean, I assume like... that 
at, at best they have grossly undervalued Oris. And you know what? Like if they want one of the, if they want one of theirs knighted, like Luke's a knight, he can knight him. We don't Oris doesn't need to be part of it. They want like, the very yes. cheek of it. They want <sighs> Bronze John to knight him. Well and... tough, they can't have it. Not like this. I look at Oris, like, right in the face, okay? <laughs> if I get on a step stool, I do. <laughs> and I'm like, I dislike this so much that I debated not even coming here to present it to you. But I respect you to make the right choice. And it's, it's your choice. But, in my opinion, fuck them. Uh, he just gives you a grim-eyed nod and puts his helmet on. <laughs> Adam looks at Reno approvingly. <laughs> yeah. That's his fucking helmet. <laughs> yes, you need to leave now. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> no, no. No, I mean, I go no. away. R R Rena, R R Rena, thank, thank you for being honest, though. I'm glad I wasn't there when he was putting that proposal to you. I as Cause, well. Because then I, I would have said all those fucks to his face. <laughs> uh, it worked out this way. Grace of the gods. Look at Oris. Oh, get him. <laughs> His helmeted head nods impassively. All right. Uh, last call for Adam before they head out. Um, I'm just gonna, like, I'm, I'm not, I don't think I'm tall enough to actually, like, hold his heads. Uh, there, there are, uh, there's little stools and stuff there. So like <laughs> Austin and I will have a seat. <laughs> yeah. So you can you can clamber onto a stool if you want to. <laughs> That's just embarrassing though. <laughs> I'll just kind of grasp by his elbows and just tell him just look into his face through the through the visor, I guess. Uh, or is you are going to win this. I am so proud of you. Show them how it's done. Kiss him. <laughs> uh, he, he, he has his helmet on. <laughs> also, uh, also, what if it goes wrong and then it puts him off his game and I lose 50 gold dragons? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I can't argue All right. with that. <laughs> uh, he, he reaches out and gives you uh, a smack on the arm um, that threatens to to knock you off your feet because uh, it's a smack, but also all the weight of the armor and stuff. The arm um, is the bum of the arm. But, so. but he gives you like a smack. Uh, <laughs> the bum and then, of the arm. <laughs> so it's like a, a smack on the arm and then like a, a squeeze. Uh, and then he turns and heads out uh, and mounts up. Um, and, <laughs> and, then, and then hands the reins down to you. How little he knows and how much I would have. <laughs> okay, so, so I'll lead the horse out. Uh, the eldest of Bronze Yon Royce's son, Sir Andar Royce, his firstborn and heir to Runestone, uh, is leading Waymar Royce out. Uh, he is not all armored up. He's in just his, um, you know, padded gambeson uh, with like a leather vest on type of thing, but sword at his hip because the Royces are a martial folk. Uh, Waymar Royce uh, is in his heavy, sturdy armor, uh, of course, uh, it is not one of the enchanted 
suits of bronze armor. Um, it looks fairly newly made, uh, and the steel has already been blackened uh, and painted, uh, but it does have a few spots where, like, the paint has been, like, carved off and runes have been, like, etched in. So it's a pretty striking, uh, you know, black armor with a few bronze runes on it for luck. Not as many as are on Bronze John Royce's armor, uh, but it's got a few on there as the family tradition uh, is upheld. Um, and then young Adam, uh, much less daunting looking than Sir Andar Royce, uh, leads out Oris and his uh, looming courser. Uh, Oris has his helmet already on, as per Lady Raina's instructions uh, from the other day. Uh, and he is just grim and expressionless uh, behind that visor. Uh, his weapons have been arrayed on, on the shelf. Um, and we are just about ready to go. Uh, I'm assuming bets are in. One second. All right. Felicia, Felicia did get her bet in before she went AFK. Uh, I just had to holler over my shoulder to check. Uh, everybody else got wagers in. Then let's do this. As is my want, I'm going to roll a bunch of dice. And then just kind of describe it a little after the fact. So. He's got that, 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 plus that. That is a palpable hit. Okay. Uh, in the first pass, those of you with a keen eye for tourney fighting, uh, notice that Oris rolled about an 18, uh, and Waymar Royce uh, rolled about a 20. So they're both looking pretty solid. Uh, they're both good hits. Uh, Waymar Royce seems to be a bit uh, more technically proficient uh, on that first pass, but you guys also know Oris is maybe a little distracted right now. Um, so they're both solid hits. Uh, ba -ba -ba, that'll stay in the saddle. And a ba -ba -ba. All right, both of them stay in the saddle. Uh, spears are splintered dramatically. Uh, the crowd hollers. Um, on the sidelines, Robar Royce uh, is cheering on his, his baby brother uh, there on his end of the tourney field. Um, his elder brother, or his eldest brother, is also cheering him on. Bronze Yon Royce is standing impassively uh, with his arms crossed over his broad chest. Um, he is actually up on the royal box. He's been invited up there, and uh, King Robert is chattering at him, and a, he reaches out a clang onto his armor. And, ah, look at that one. Ah, good hit. Yeah. Uh, look at your boy go. And and that sort of thing. Um, but Bronze Yon himself is just almost as impassive as if he had a helmet on. Uh, just featureless, uh, his his craggy features behind his gray beard uh, are just blank uh, and, and staring impassively. On the second pass, we have a less stellar roll there. And a Pretty stellar roll there. On pass two, uh, Oris looks a bit more solid. Um, and both are very good hits again. Uh, but Oris's lance shatters spectacularly. And Waymar uh, struggles but stays in the saddle. And so does Oris. Third Ooh, passes. Ah. They're both... Shattering lances with solid, accurate hits. Um, it is a difficult back and forth going on. Uh, 
on the third pass. Wow, that's an awful goddamn roll. Um, both lances shatter. Both squires reel in the saddle. Uh, but uh, Waymar manages to keep both feet in the stirrups for balance, and Oris doesn't seem to do that. Uh, his arms pinwheel, and he kind of hangs half in the saddle. Uh, his best goddamn die was a four on this handful of dice. Hey, uh, I have a destiny point. I will give it to Oris, by the way. Okay. Oh, yay! Um, he does not spend it. Uh, instead, he stays, <laughs> he stays hanging in the saddle uh, and, and then falls from the saddle uh, fairly close to Adam uh, and reaching, twisting over one shoulder, holding a hand out, uh, immediately back on his feet. Like, even before he stands all the way up, like, he's got one foot under him and is still climbing back to his feet, and he's just like, anything. Uh, yeah. It's just holding a gauntleted hand. Yeah. So, Ash, yeah. uh, do you want to do stab with a spear, hack with an axe, or smash with a hammer? Smash with a hammer, obviously, because that's my favorite. <laughs> but Although I do have the question of, like, can Adam actually carry that hammer? <laughs> with, with both hands, Adam can manage any him. of... Yeah. Adam can manage any of Oris's weapons with both hands just oh! fine. <laughs> so, uh, it is not as keenly balanced and, and handy. Um, but yeah, you're, oh, you, it's, not, it's not like King Robert's Warhammer from Valyrian Steel, where the thing's like 35 pounds on the end of a stick, or, you know, this is just a, you know, small sledgehammer that looks like it had been hammered into a spike on one end of it. So it's like half it. sledge, half warhammer, bigger than your average warhammer, but it's not like that cartoonish warhammer dwarven hammer size that where it's an anvil on a stick. Um, <laughs> so uh, hammer it is. Uh, sir Waymar, or sorry, young Waymar, he's not a sir yet. Um, Quite pointedly. <laughs> He's going to stick with a sword. He's going to stick with that long blade expertise that he shows in the first badass one-liner of the whole Song of Ice and Fire series. Uh, and so uh, he meets the bastard afoot and has the advantage on him because the winners always get initiative. Uh, that is... Not a terrible opening roll. Um, Oris initially already took. All right. Um, he batters at Oris's armor uh, in a handy combo, but Oris is able to block it either with his shield or with uh, the head of the hammer uh, with the very first strike. Uh, one slash of the combo gets through on Oris's armor, but does not seem to bother him. Oris retaliates. Reroll that. That's a good reroll. Who's a good die? You're a good die. <laughs> um, with a fucking 23 right out the gate. Uh, that is against a 7. Ikes. Uh, so that's 4 degrees of success uh, on Oris's opening goddamn attack. Let's destiny point that to make it three degrees of success uh, as Waymar wants desperately to impress his father. Still, three degrees of success is 24 points of damage. Uh, oh. His shield gets knocked about in half. That said, the Royces are made of sturdy stuff. Uh, and this lad is about a, maybe a year, maybe two younger than Oris, uh, but he's still pretty big for his age. Uh, varsity football type of build. But it looks like the first exchange goes Oris's way. Second flurry. Oh, shit. That's a lot of sixes. Uh, so. That is a fucking 27 from Waymar Royce. Zounds. 
Uh, Oris is combat defense to that. 10, so that's a 17. So four degrees of success. Uh, that is 20 points of damage. Uh, eight will get past armor. All right. Oris has taken an injury. That is Royce's first mistake. Because uh, now Oris gets to attack twice. <laughs> once for Berserker. Uh, once for his actual action. Both are at a minus one. But um, that's 10, 18. Okay. Uh, it's two degrees. That is blah, 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 20 minus one. So two hits, both for two degrees of success. Uh, the shield falls in splinters. Um, and uh, that is two injuries to one injury. Favor Oris. Um, with the shield broken, uh, Waymar will stumble backwards um, and wave, hold up a hand. Uh, as he backpedals to his elder brother and heir to runestone um, and retrieves from him a great sword uh, now that he no longer has a shield in play. So, uh, yes. long, long blades for a bit more base damage here. Uh, yikes, that is a 24. Uh, so, 17... One, 28, uh, 28 minus 12, sorry, is 16. It will be another two injuries to make that a much smaller number. Uh, and then, holy shit, um, Oris comes back at him with, fuck me, 66664. Oh, uh, for his yeah. berserker, his berserker attack, uh, and then his regular attack because he is up next is six 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 five two. Uh, that is gonna be a fucking wound, and then another wound. Um, the kid's gonna stay in for one more. That is when someone should quit, as has been the case with several of you. Often an opponent is going to stick around after they should quit. Uh, he is going to stick around for one good swing. He is going to do an aggressive attack. He is going to keep an extra die to try and knock some sense into Oris, which is not a good idea. Uh, that's a fucking 29. Um, that's going to be math, 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 great sword damage. That is two more injuries on Oris. So he is out of injuries and gets a berserker strike for fuck me. That's a lot of sixes and fives again. Uh, six, 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 five, two. Coming up on five dice. Uh, that's going to be a third injury. And then it is Oris's action. Uh, and he will take aim for a bonus die. And then he will do that. Take an aim for a bonus die on a fighting test. There's that. Uh, Reroll that for Blood of the Andals. There's that. He's going to spend a destiny point to keep that extra die. Uh, 10, 20, 22 against combat defense. Uh, 2 right now. Dropping to 5, 17. So 2, 7, 12, 17. That is a 4 degree of success hit uh, with a gauntlet. Uh, which is less damage than a hammer, um, but that will knock the boy out. Waymar uh, starts to go, I yeah, foo! Uh, and he eats, 
gauntlet to the face, uh, and a tooth goes flying, um, and he is sent tumbling to the ground um, as Oris winds up with the hammer and then lets the hammer fall behind him and just tosses a monstrous overhand right uh, into Waymar Royce's face to finish him off without finishing him off with the hammer uh, which yeah, I was, I was, would have I was been say, like, pretty grotesque Adam, Adam, damage. Yeah, Adam would have been watching very close, like, make sure he could step in if it looked like Oris was going to go too far. Just going? Nah, he's, he's alright. Uh, he, uh, he's alright. He, he wasn't gonna kill the kid. Um, so, um, that will do for that. Uh, yeah, Waymar Royce is is down and lying still. Um, and you guys did see one tooth go arcing through the air. Um, Oris kind of looms over him, um, having cast aside his shield also. So he's got both gauntleted fists uh, balled up at his side, uh, like waiting for Waymar to get back up. Uh, and Waymar does not. Uh, so Oris just kind of stands there for a few seconds, uh, breathing heavy, chest heaving, shoulders rising and falling, um, and then he lets the adrenaline dump um, and uh, turns and picks up his hammer, uses it to quickly salute uh, rather sloppily uh, towards the king uh, and maybe also his uncle, Bronze John Royce, who is next to the king, uh, and then he stalks off the field. Um, okay. Bronze John Royce does not respond at all. Robert is going, ho, 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 seven hells, nearly took his bleeding head off. <laughs> Watch that yeah. Royce roll. Is anyone actually going onto the field to check he's okay? Uh, yeah, he, he groans and shifts a little after several seconds. Um, okay. uh, but yes, his, his brother um, th that was squaring for him does go and check on him. Uh, and it's just a matter of moments before he's groggily being helped to his teeth. Okay. Uh, and a, uh, 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 you know, like a handkerchief type of thing is up, you know, up in his mouth uh, to get some of the blood. And he's Staggering, he's looking pretty punch drunk, uh, but yeah, he is he is cinematically KO'd and brought back, okay. not I, I, down and seizing or anything like that. Okay, Adam will have scuttled after Oris, um, which is fair. Um, Adam, you have a bit higher uh status and and all that. Uh, you know that Oris should not be leaving right now. Because that was the championship yeah. of a of a joust. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna go and try and try and grab him then. Uh, try and bring him back. Um. He, or, he or, stops or, when you grab him. What? Or, or, sorry. You're you're not su supposed to leave just yet. You've. Uh... Uh, what? He wants another go. No. Or no. Maybe no, his brother no. does, or maybe they're fucking dead no, no. and it all sounds a little bit tinny and inhuman from the helmet yeah. but there's yeah no 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 no, no there, there's there's just the formality of the, you, you need to stand just stand to be addressed as the as the champion that, that's all it's it's all right it's, it's it, you don't the fight's finished it, it's just a thing sorry like I'm, I'm not getting the wording properly <laughs> But Adam, Adam will get the wording properly, and it's, it's fine. And, um, and, goes, oh, yeah, and, oh, I'd, I'd, li I'd like to, um, I'd like to use like persuade to kind of try and pacify uh, him. You, you, uh, yeah, uh, that role is not necessary in this instance. Okay, uh, it is Adam. Uh, he, he soothes the savage or yes. um, <laughs> Yeah, so it's, you're not having to argue to him to yeah. do it. He just kind of okay. forgot because he hasn't done it before. Yeah. It's, um, it's okay. We, we, we'll 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 go back in a minute. Um, and he actually, we, we, we just need to do this thing. But I'll be right with. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, and this is you guys are like thirty feet off the field, you know, like he didn't he didn't get on his horse and like run for it or anything. Yeah. Uh, but he uh, he reaches uh, or he kind of leans down your way and he goes, uh, and you can actually see through the kind of asymmetrical visor slits. Uh, he's looking at you pretty wide eyed, and he goes, "Shit, do, do I have to do that Queen Eleven beauty bollocks?" Um, no, no, that's that's just the the, the main joust. Okay, and like you see his shoulders slump as his his rage was You're replaced relieved. by social terror for a moment, and he goes, "All right, all right, all right." No, um, no it's fine. They, it's fine. They okay, just need, okay. They just they just need to basically formally declare you champion. You give them a bow. It, it's it's not a big deal, and then and then we can be out of here. All right. Uh, he heads back uh, with you, um, and it looks like the. The moment of panicked terror about having to interact with highborn women uh, shocked his system enough. Uh, I know so the he has led back I know just that's fine. Uh, um, and you Robert, that. you could have could have been like, oh, or men, whatever. <laughs> yeah, you're like, well, yeah. I mean, there's just a, a betting ceremony after the squatters joust, of course. Yeah, oh, no, um, Adam would not so, be that yeah. cruel. <laughs> um. Uh, um, King yeah, Robert do, is do, do on I... his feet up in the up at the royal box, uh, kind of clapping uh, bronze yawn on the shoulder. He's like, ah, the boy made it to the finals and well struck. Look at the size of the other lad. Die, ah, did fine. And uh, still, you're losing him to the wall either way, but I bet he's the best fucking jouster they'll have up there, eh? Come oh, on, chin up, yawn. It's not all of that. Uh, and, you know, he's just kind of hanging with one of his drinking and hunting buddies. And then he goes, oh, the champion returns. What's the matter, bastard? Lost your way? Oh, uh, for, 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 forgive us, your grace. Uh, Oris is, uh, uh, this is his first joust. He not, a, he didn't, he was not aware of the, the custom uh, of declaring the champion. Boy serves some heads night, don't he? That is correct, Your Grace. Uh, Robert kind of laughs and pats his own stomach. Ah, ha, ha. Not used to seeing the champions then. That's fine, it's fine. Just kneel a moment, boy. Well struck, well done. Uh, you clearly fucking won. <laughs> I, I rhymed. Write it down, Pycel. <laughs> Fuck, that's the new thing. Anyways, well done, boy. Your champion will get you your horse and your money and all that uh, later on. And, and uh, make sure you come to the feast in a few days. Uh, the formal ending feast is open to any champion, even if, like, a lowborn had won the archery contest or riding contest, like, they'd still get to come. Um, so, was, so see you at the feast in a few days, lad, and you eat your fill and bring some to take back to your head tonight. Uh, has, has Adam yeah. got his hand up? Because that would also be adorable. No, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> like, okay. Uh, so no, go no, ahead, though. No. Yeah. I, I, the player, uh, just as as we're kind of like giving our kind of thank you, as Oris is kind of giving his thank you bow for that, I want to be looking directly at Bronze John Royce in a in a way that is not in any way impolite and to the casual observer would just seem like a, a, a smile of benign pride but just the subtle hint in Adam's eyes of no you don't get this one, this one's ours he's a oh, little right. finger um, Bronze Young Royce does not seem to be feeling anything right now uh, his feature is just like a statue. He's got yeah. these craggy wind, you know, wind burned uh, face that looks as hard as his armor. And he's still just standing there with his arms crossed. Occasionally you can see his mouth moving as he responds to some of Robert's kind of good natured, you know, jabs. Um, but he's not like ruefully grinning about it. He's not storming off. He's not. Yeah. Much of anything, 
Uh, yeah. That's, that's just, fine. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's okay. It's not for him. It's purely for Adam's own satisfaction. Right. It, it is right. absolutely fair. Um, so, that leaves us just a few minutes. Uh, and so we're largely going to call it here. We once again managed to not get to Lady Olena. So maybe we'll see Oz in here in a few weeks because we know how he likes to not miss out on Lady Olena. But <laughs> guaranteed two weeks from now, viewers, we are going to kick right the fuck off with feast preparation. Oh, uh, as the, the party will be assembling in the House Tyrell Mance here in town, the villa that they keep here in King's Landing, uh, where the Queen of Thorns, Lady Olena Tyrell, will be recapping the week that House Nymerian has had and making sure that all of them look presentable to enter the Red Keep alongside her for a feast. We have a 10-course meal ready, planned out, raring to go, in excruciatingly descriptive detail to torture players and viewers alike <laughs> with. I have a list of 30 NPCs, every one of which you guys have at least run into in passing. And chat, when you come back here in two weeks, you're going to help me determine which of those 30 NPCs are actively doing stuff that the players will be responding to and in what order. So there's a few interactions that are scripted. There's a ton of interactions that the players are going to get to do with these NPCs on their own. But every single NPC, including the Royals and the Kingsguard Knights present, is listed and numbered. And you, chat, will be helping me determine which of them uh, is going to be kind of prompting small cutscenes and potential interactions and stuff. So, this feast should be a pretty good time. Uh, it's going to be a ton of food, ton of NPC interactions, and you're going to meet exactly one NPC that you have not met yet. Only one that one of the players has met before but does not remember. Da -da -da -dun -da! Cliffhanger. We'll see y'all in two weeks. And would you say anybody who misses it is a fool of the highest caliber? Oh, definitely. I would say that they deserve to take the black in shame. Ooh. Wow. For missing this upcoming shame. feast. Shame. Yeah. It's not shame. just betting now. Now it's fucking drama. <laughs> so, <laughs> we will see everybody back here in two weeks for a very, very fancy feast.